important to bore people with a lot of discussion of these kinds of issues, um, usually during Crusader Kings 2 casts, but generally um, any of these kinds of uh, ideas come through through gaming. I think uh, one neat thing about this platform is that we all have a common interest in terms of, uh, of the games that we play. And um, I kind of need to accept that uh, where normal people said that, you know, I really didn't like um, Econ, um, I loved it. And so there's something that went wrong with me. Uh, there's something that caused me to like this and have a different perspective on the subject than uh, others. And so I find playing games like Crusader Kings 2 or Civilization, a lot of strategy games actually lend themselves to discussing uh, economic issues that I think people are genuinely interested in, um, but maybe in their school experience were given a negative introduction to. Uh, maybe something that was either a little too difficult or didn't quite effectively communicate the relevance or the importance of the issue. And so in addition to flailing around and being bad at Dark Souls, uh, we occasionally talk about current affairs. Uh, we are definitely not believers and don't talk about politics or religion here, although we certainly remain respectful in terms of our dialogue. Hey, we got transcodes. That means I can up the quality setting, guys. After I'm done getting Zika all over me. But how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, how was, um, how was Shan's stream and what were you playing, my friend? Leah too. how the devil are you? Um, and I also, I also need to give a shout out to W. Shan, but uh, a man who probably doesn't require any introduction around here, but I am not in the best of states to be typing on the keys. I should have done that earlier. Alright, you know what? We're going to just go back. To, we're going to reset. We're going to go back to that bonfire and I'm going to properly shout everybody out. I'm doing quite well myself, Lord Squiddy. I've got a big stack of grading to do, which I have not completed. Let me just take a minute here and uh, shout out these wonderful people and change my encoding settings. Overcast Walden and the Werewolf. What is... Okay, W. Shen. I, guys, actually, this is a great time because I'm going to be uh, shouting out his cast anyway. For those of you who do not know W. Shan, I am not kidding when I say he is one of my favorite uh, casters. And it's not just because he's a large caster who uh, will, um, will host me, although that's a really wonderful uh, factor as well. Um, but he has got a camera presence and just a style of broadcast that it is pure entertainment from the very beginning. He is also one of these people who is not afraid to experiment on the platform. And this is one thing we do also occasionally talk about on the stream here is the idea of Twitch sort of being this first opportunity to do a little bit of, um, you know, it's, it's really the first one that's gotten interactivity down exceptionally well. And I think to see all of the stuff that he's doing, whether it's beyond the broadcast with his interviews, whether it's uh, check the deaths, um, and even some of the things that he tried and then got rid of because it couldn't quite work, uh, I guess, in the way that he had intended it. Um, in addition to just being a guy who seems like a born entertainer. I mean, obviously, uh, that cast is very clearly the product of a lot of hard work. That's the reason why I say seems like. But this is a guy who I really can't imagine doing uh, anything, other uh, anything otherwise. Because when he's not casting on Twitch TV, his band, Nat King Cobra, uh, is on making great music. And, um, and again, also leveraging Twitch for its, uh, its music musical side as well. Um, but somebody who's really interesting to watch on Twitch just because of what he's doing to push out the frontier and show us what can be done on this platform, um, but never loses sight of putting on a great show and giving you a reason to be there, giving you a reason to sub. So out of everybody who has been here, uh, rip check the, de oh, check the deaths isn't a thing anymore. Um, shows you how, <laughs> how bad I am at, uh, entertainer is a strong word. Um, but yeah, he is, uh, he is an absolutely fantastic guy, um, somebody I've had the great benefit of, uh, of meeting in person and is every bit as gracious and, uh, and entertaining in person as he is in, uh, on camera. Um, it's really, I guess this is one of the big things I can say is that the entertainment that I get out of checking out his channel um, is absolutely equal to just what he communicates as a person. He's an absolutely fantastic guy and of course is uh, Dating Seriously Clara, who is my, my stream boss, both as the owner of Team Panda and somebody who I mod for. We just announced it tonight. Okay, good. Well, not good, because I mean, I'm sorry to see it, but... Uh, 
But yeah, as we said, retiring for a new program idea. So again, uh, somebody who's not content to rest on his laurels. Uh, again, one of the strongest recommendations that I can make on Twitch. If ever I'm trying to, you know, talk to my econ friends who say it's like, you know, you're so smart. Why do you spend all your time uh, playing video games? Um, I kid you not, W Shand has been the tool that I've used to. Sorry, I just called W Shand a tool. That's not what I meant by that. Um, but uh, his broadcast has been uh, the way that I've tried to communicate that this isn't just a bunch of people sitting down watching people play video games, but it's a legitimate form of entertainment, that it's a, a, way, a good way to spend t time and money. Um, you know, something that holds its own to watching, you know, House of Cards or whatever your favorite TV show is. Um, and that is not a statement that I can, uh, I can make about a lot of casters. So I hope that gives you a bit of an indication in terms of why I'm taking the time to shout out this, uh, this really great entertainer because he's somebody uh, I definitely look up to and, uh, and could stand to learn a lot more from. Uh, I also want to take the time to shout out Leo2. Leo2 is uh, no stranger to this cast. He actually came the first time that W. Shand uh, hosted me and we bonded over Crusader Kings 2. And um, he has since become a really fantastic advocate of the stream. Much, you know, he's been much kinder than I deserve. Um, he is a really wonderful caster in his own right. He also, again, has a great diversity in terms of the stuff that he does. He has done uh, programming streams. He actually does some tools for Nuclear Throne, which is a really interesting game in its own right. Uh, by Vlambeer, if you haven't checked it out, it's a really good one. Uh, I haven't personally played it myself, but I, he makes that game look so much fun. Uh, I am, uh, it's really just a matter of time until I, uh, until I get and check it out. But um, Leah 2, uh, again, in addition to doing programming streams, in addition to kind of doing a little bit of community service in terms of providing a great tool for a, a great game, which was, uh, had a lot of its de uh, development streamed on Twitch, uh, he streams Crusader Kings 2 quite well. And so because I've built this new streaming uh, set up. I have been attempting to um, I've been attempting to put a little bit of diversity, play some games like uh, Dark Souls, in addition to my usual strategy fair. And uh, Leah Two streams uh, Crusader Kings Two when he when he does. I mean, he doesn't do it all the time, uh, but he streams the game quite well himself. And so I feel I don't feel as bad uh, leaving that game behind uh, in favor of doing things like Ellie Noir and XCOM. So uh, these are some wonderful people that you can check out and, uh, and have a good time on Twitch. And of course, for those of you who don't want to hang out uh, after the W. Shan raid, I completely understand because this is, to put it very, to maybe give a, uh, oops, let's try and pick up the pace. Um, this is definitely a very niche stream. Um, but I really appreciate, as I actually, we, we talked about this uh, last night as well. Uh, I think one of the best things that a caster can ask for is just to be given the chance um, to, I think a lot of, a lot of people focus on this idea of trying to make that number go up. Oh my God, we just went up to 672 follows. Where, where did you all come from? Um, I promised I was going to take a minute to thank you all individually. I'll check my uh, Twitch alerts dashboard when I'm, I'm not dodging poison arrows. Um, I think one of the things that we can really ask for on this platform is uh, is maybe not to obsess about numbers, um, but rather just ask to be given the chance. You know, uh, I am definitely looking. I've I've had a lot of great fortune in being able to um, to have some really uh, really kind and really interested viewers, people who both challenge me and support me uh, in terms of the um, you know either conversation topics or you know giving me some encouragement when I'm not feeling like I'm on top of my uh, my casting games. Um, and, uh, again, so there's, you know, it's not just that the streamer is looking to get a higher number of viewers, um, but we're looking for the right kind, right? I'm, I, def I would not be interested in having a bunch of people who are just here, um, telling me how bad I am at Dark Souls. I know, <laughs> I know how bad I am at these games. Um... And so, in the end, uh, the fact that all of you have decided to hang out and give me a shot to see whether or not this is the sort of thing that you're interested in. Ooh. I seem to remember really liking this set of armor. Um, I'm going to have to double, double check it. Uh, it means a lot. I think it's really the best thing that a caster can ask for. And especially when you guys come on for somebody like... Uh, oh, thank you so much, Fapple Cider. What a name. <laughs> um, 
I think one of the big things that you can say is that uh, when you're given this opportunity, especially from such a big caster like Shand and somebody who's a born entertainer like him, uh, it means a lot to just have that opportunity be given and uh, and see whether or not it's uh, it's something for you. And again, I completely understand if people don't want to hang out, but let me just take a quick second here and uh, and see see if I can thank all of you individually. So uh, we've got a few people here. W. Shand, uh, sorry, uh, Lee Tu says W. Shand is an inspiration to many of us, which I agree with. And uh, it's very easy to give those kind words, Lee Tu. You definitely, uh, definitely deserve them. And Fatal Cleverbart, don't say that about yourself. You seem like a really respectable and cool guy. That's very kind of you to say, uh, Fatal Cleverbart. I'm definitely not interested in the kind of like prostrating my, uh, sorry, prostrate, pr uh, pros prostrating myself before, um, you know, chat, you know, I'm not worthy. I'm not going to go uh, that far with it. But I definitely understand, uh, definitely understand that this stuff is, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's, it's basically a big matching game, right? The wonderful thing about Twitch is a very diverse platform. And so it's nice, uh, it's nice that we're able to kind of find these matches and find, uh, you know, find some compatibility in terms of the kinds of streams that we're interested in. So he's scientifically created. Uh, so let me just take a second here, guys. I know I didn't uh, properly acknowledge all the people who followed. So we've got 1-0 Gaming, Shadow Amnesia, K87, Duke Paulus, Snut65, Cypher Seed, Paranormal Death, The Dark Fellow, Fatal Clever Bart, Clever Bot, and Fapple Cider. This was supposed to be a one-hour stream. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> um, don't prostrate myself on Twitch. It's against the terms of, <laughs> terms of service. <laughs> Is it prostate? Is the is the biological term? Anyways, um, you know, there's definitely this kind of false modesty um, that uh, I'm not going to say people are wrong to do it, right? It's it's part of the rhetoric of of Twitch. Um, but I think the best thing I can do to you is be is to speak honestly, right? Polonius's advice to his son Laertes in Hamlet, to thine own self be true. Um, and I think uh, I will, you know, I, th I think I kind of know where I am in the pecking order and uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. I am very lucky to have the viewers that I have. I'm really lucky to have you guys hanging out right now. And uh, I think, um, I will, I will definitely speak plainly in terms of my position to where it is, um, but like I said, I am very grateful to have this spot because it was not that long ago that um, I was casting to a empty, empty chat and we had a few people come in and talk about liking the sound of my voice and uh, actually Jesse Quill, uh, one of W. Shan's mods. Uh oh. Uh, I hate Toxic with a passion. I think I'm safe here, so let's uh, chat on on some moss. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, CPO Williams. I made them uh, made them while I was thanking everybody for their uh, for stopping by. But you feel a lump. Be sure to check yourself, uh, chat. Men's health is important, even beyond Movember. But yeah. Um, Jesse Quill encouraged me to keep talking. Uh, Clara gave me a home on Team Panda, despite the fact that I'm not a cam streamer. Uh, we have Endors, who I don't think is here tonight, uh, but joined us for Gods Will Be Watching. Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories in a, a video game. It's, uh, I'd say it's the Dark Souls of video games. No, it's the Dark Souls of, uh, of adventure games. Very difficult game, but very satisfying to, to go through. And, um... And yeah, it's, uh, I've been amazed at how generous people have been with their attention and with their time. And uh, I think especially, too, because I would love to stream a little bit more often um, with all the homework. Oh, God! With all the homework and things like that, um, I've become more and more conscious of... Okay, let's get the hell out of here. Drink your Estus, you idiot! I don't know why I wasn't drinking Estus, but that's what I get. Um, but yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things um, that people give uh, give streamers on Twitch is time. 
Um, there's so much stuff that I want to do and I don't have the time for. And uh, I think that's really the, the big thing um, that people give when they're, they're watching channels. So I think that's the best way I can say thank you for, for coming here. Uh, and W. Shan, sorry to hear about the headache. Again, thank you so much for uh, the host. It's absolutely humbling that you did that. Uh, I, uh, I wish I could pay you back somehow, um, but I hope you feel better and uh, I will definitely have a great stream. I've got a wonderful chat um, chat of people to, to stop by. Sorry guys, I'm just going to switch back to my, my dashboard. Uh, Gods Will Be Watching is a Devolver Digital uh, game. It's by a group called Deconstruct Team. It started off, started off as a Laudum Dare uh, title, where you're on an alien planet and you kind of need to manage um, manage resources, um, so that you can sort of repair a radio and survive. Um, but basically, I'd say imagine a very simplified point-and-click adventure game, like Leah Two says, and um, and. Uh, Basically, it's a game that puts you in a series of kind of like moral dilemmas and um, and kind of very intense. It's, it's kind of set on this backdrop of kind of an interstellar uh, espionage story. And um, it kind of faces you with these moral dilemmas. Uh, you play a, a character called Sergeant Burden uh, and you kind of go through these increasingly difficult scenarios um, trying to survive in a... Uh, you know, an extremely hostile, very difficult um, set of circumstances. In fact, I'll put it to you this way, there's a torture sequence in that game where uh, you get Russian roulette played with you, and in the original version of that game, um, it was pure random number generation. So you could do everything quote-unquote right, and, um, and you have a one in six chance of just getting shot um, and that sequence ending. Uh, before, you know, before anything else uh, happened. So, uh, now, the really brilliant thing about that game is that they actually find a good story-driven reason uh, for those, like, for those uh, RNG bits. It's actually one of the things that really floored me when I got to the end of that game, uh, was a way that they actually managed to sell it. But uh, But with that in mind, there was actually an outcry for like an easier mode uh, which they eventually obliged with but um, I'll, I'll definitely tell you like it's hard to make a recommendation like that because it's so very clearly not for everyone um, but it's one of the most satisfying uh, stories that I've played in quite some time and it's a uh, especially because it's a it's a game without voice acting I really like playing those games because it gives me a chance to ham it up a little bit uh, so in addition to being this really interesting story with a lot of kind of moral dilemmas, um, you know, who you have to decide who lives and who dies in certain situations, whether or not you confess information or uh, hold it back, uh, whether or not your partner loses a limb to the torture or something like that. There's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in that game, and uh, they do this really good job of tying it all together at the, uh, at the end. So... Uh, Joshi Man has no morals and doesn't appreciate the insinuation that you do. I mean, again, you can sort of see me talking my, uh, my book in this regard. I don't even remember how I'm supposed to get to this guy. Or am I? I guess I could try jumping, but I don't see the point. You win this round, Dart Man. Um, how college? You're just starting out yourself? Um, I mean, so now I'm going to like completely erase any goodwill about humility that I had. I did find the first couple of years of college very easy. Um, now I got a little, a later start. I started off working in film and then I, and then I went back to school or didn't even go back to school, started attending school. Freshman electrical engineer, okay. Uh, I mean, I'm an econ major, so I have almost no, maybe some of our math courses will be similar. Um, I mean, I think the big thing about it is to, um, 
I almost fell off the edge. I think the biggest thing about college is that it's very easy to kind of reduce it down to just this vocational training to say, you know, I'm here to learn this job and anything else is irrelevant. Why do I need to take these electives? Why do I need to like learn about classical studies or something like that? So to give you an idea, I did, um, I, I won't lie, I did well in my undergrad. Um, I was uh, an honors um, economics student, which meant I had to write an undergraduate thesis and uh, I had a very, a very, very talented professor who really pushed me to, um, you know, to do something original and interesting. Um, and, um, you know, I think in that case, it's very easy to say that I, I liked econ, I did well in it, and so, you know, I could have very easily just said, you know, what's the point in, stu in studying anything else? Um, because clearly I've got kind of an affinity for this. Um, but I was also a research assistant in classical studies. Uh, the, you know, um, kind of the uh, translation, interpretation of, um, of Greek and Roman texts. So uh, specifically philosophy. So like Plato and, and Aristotle and things like that. Um, and some of the lesser known Hellenics. Like some, um, I think probably Epicurus is a name that, that some of you might be familiar with. Um, and there's something really satisfying about that. So keep in mind that I don't think there's a lot of times in school that you're going to have a course which is all about trying to gain a completely foreign perspective, a completely different way of thinking about the world. Because there's like there's practices in ancient Greece which obviously have no place in the modern world. Um, you know, to put that in very delicate terms. Um, and so, you know, you can sort of say, it's like, well, why do I care what Plato wrote, you know, over 2,000 years ago, right? Why, why should I care? And in some ways, you know, I think it's right to ask any, uh, of any course, um, you know, why am I studying this thing? Um, because, like we, you know, like we said earlier, the, our time is precious, right? Any time that I spend doing one thing is uh, time that I have to give up from another activity. So, for instance, I'm not grading papers right now, um, and I'm going to have to do that probably early in the morning tomorrow. Um, oh, planning to go to Columbia for grad school. Very good. Um, I'm probably not good enough to get into Columbia, <laughs> but Columbia is a, a really great school. Uh, I've not heard about the Cooper Union. Actually, let me just take a second here. Um... Paranormal Death goes to college in the summer. What do you study, Paranormal Death? Uh, going to an Ono... Onodaga Community College for two years, then hopefully St. Rose and Albany. Uh, New York City, Google it. Sports medicine or become a vet's assistant. Very cool. Um, but yeah, so kind of where I was going with the whole, um, you know, the subject of study thing. I'm not quite sure where I should go. Um... I don't really want to go after these boulder carrying guys yet, but I also don't want to poison myself today. Ah, uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's um, let's head over to the islands. So yeah, I mean, uh, you can see the response inside of chat, right? Oh God, philosophy. That that thing. Um, and yet there is, there's value in it, right? Like how many classes, so, um, the big thing about classics that was interesting to me is that, uh, let's take the example of the opening to the Republic, right? You've got, uh, Socrates going down to Piraeus and he gets stopped by, ah! he gets stopped by, you know, a big group of people, and they want to they wanna talk to him, they want to sort of ask him some questions. Um, there's kind of an intimid- uh, a threat of violence um, implied if he doesn't uh, follow through. And Socrates is basically asked- um, is basically asked this question. It's like, you know, let's say I'm the biggest badass in the world. Uh, let's say, you know, I can take care of myself, I've got political co connections, I'm strong, I can- you know, I can fight. Ouch. Um, why should I worry about being good, right? What's in it for me? Why, why should I care at all 
um, about morality. Um, now, there's never been a good answer to this. Um, you know, Plato takes, like, the entirety of the Republic to answer this question. Um, and then you can go and you can watch that Game of Thrones episode where it ends with Littlefinger, you know, saying chaos isn't a pit, chaos is a ladder. I can't see who's hosting us right now. Oh, uh, Black Iron uh, Caliber, thank you so much for that host. Uh, Socrates was sentenced to death by Hemlock. Um, and it's partly because he sassed the jury. Um, but yeah, um, in this case, uh, you know, everybody was talking about that monologue, right? Chaos isn't a pit, chaos is a ladder, you know. Um, I'm, you know, basically Littlefinger's saying is like, I'm strong, I'm capable, uh, I like chaos because it's the great equalizer. It's going to allow me to, to come out on top. Thank you so much, Leotu. Guys, thank you, thank you for those, uh, those, um, those hosts. It means a lot. Um, so, you know, the Republic has its own answer to that. In fact, in in my opinion, um, the challenge of Alcibiades, what opens the um, the Republic is a question that every generation needs to answer its own way. What What's in it for me for being good? Why Why do we bother with this? Why do we bother with things like morality? Um, and again, in terms of picking up the Republic, it's not that you read it because some professor told you that it's worth reading. It's because this is sometime, it's, this is the first time that we kind of have a record of people trying to ask and answer questions like this. And uh, again, when you study classics, you have to try and see, you know, what was it like to be in ancient Greece? Um, is there any relevance to what they had to say today? Or, uh, or is it just that, you know, it had its time, it was the first effort, we're not very good at doing, you know, at uh, answering these things the first time. Um, and, you know, maybe we decide to leave it. Maybe we come up with our, our own better answer. Um, there, isn't a, there isn't a certain answer to that. Um, it, it could turn out that, you know, it's just a bunch of baloney and you don't need to worry about it. Um, but again, the process of inquiry, the, the process of engaging with these ancient texts and learning something about it is, um, is good. Because, I mean, any job that you do, you're going to need... Um, oops. Uh, you're going to need to understand the other person, right? If you want to go into commerce... Uh, if you want to make a deal, you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to understand where the other party's coming from, right? So, like, whenever I do game theory stuff, um, whenever I've screwed up a game theory problem, it's because I want the other player, you know, the other party that I'm not considering, uh, to behave in the way that's best for me, not in the way that's best for them, right? It's just like playing chess. Anytime I've lost a game of chess, it's because I've not considered what the best move for my opponent is. I've, I've considered the move I want them to make and I hope is, a, you know, I hope that they make a mistake and that's the fastest way to lose a chess match. So, um, as far as college is concerned, it's easy to try and reduce it to vocational training and everybody wants a job, right? I don't know what I'm going to do for work after my, my program. I think uh, econ is a very employable degree, so it should, uh, you know, I should do well. I'm just going to let the, um, the poison go down before I jump over. But, uh, you know, the big thing about college is it's one of the few times that you're going to be able to engage at a higher level with some of these other ideas. Um, and I think, I think there's more than just kind of getting that, um, there's more than just kind of getting that, uh, that job training. Um, I do think it's an opportunity to, to really engage with some interesting ideas, uh, meet some interesting people, and... Um, you know, and, and engage, basically do the sort of stuff that makes you a better person. You know, the sort of stuff that makes you an interesting conversationalist. Or, um, you know, makes you, um, I don't know, like a better date dating partner. There's so much stuff that you get um, out of an education that isn't directly relevant to the job that you wind up doing. So, um, yeah, Duke Paulus, greatest apology. I mean, the, poli the apology is really a great way to start reading this stuff because it's so readable. Um, and especially if you don't try and take, like, the Shakespearean actor approach, you know, oh, you men of Athens, you know, but, 
you know, you take all of these scenes with Socrates being a complete sarcastic ass. Um, I actually had a law prof who kind of for a hobby uh, tra did his own translation of the Apology. And he, he refused to read it to us. He made us read it uh, to him. And we each took a role, and I wound up with a bunch of uh, sections of Socrates that I had to read. And, like, as soon as I read his translation, like, the only way I could read it would be in pure sarcasm. And he stopped the reading, and he's like, that's exactly the way that should be read. And, uh, and you know, we talked about the tone, because there's, there's tremendous irony in a lot of what Socrates says. And just because it's old and because professors make us read it, we tend to, you know, we tend to treat it with a little bit more respect than what, uh, what I think Plato... Um, Plato intended it. Uh, but I think the same thing about 1984 as well. 1984 has a really savage sense of humor at points. Um, but because it's about totalitarianism and it's got lines like, imagine, you know, if you want to know the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. People don't associate that with humor. Um, but Orwell has an extremely savage sense of humor that he's put all throughout that book. Um, and I could point you to the specific passages where you, the only way to read it is, is with... Uh, with humor. All right, sorry, I gotta gotta catch up with uh, some of the stuff that's been said in uh, in chat. I uh, never really outstretched my college search outside of Albany to Syracuse, though. I mean, this is a big thing. There's a, a paper, at least in terms of econ, there's actually a paper that talks about the relative underperformance of people who go to very good schools. Like, if you're the top of your class in Harvard, you do well. If you're the middle of your class in Harvard, you actually don't do as well as the top of the class in some like B-list universities. Um, now, obviously, I can't draw that for all professions. This was an econ paper. I think it's a Journal of Economic Perspectives. I'll try and find, uh, I'll try and find it if somebody's interested. Um, maybe send me like a Twitch message or something like that. But, um, but yeah, the biggest thing is that you know a good school will definitely have like good faculty. They'll, you know, they'll give you the opportunity to learn things. But you know, you have to bring something yourself, right? You have to, you know, there's there's. Learning is not a passive action, right? You have to be willing to go and pick up the textbook and, like, put yourself into it, right? This is why you can have a lot of people who don't bother going to school and do very well for themselves, right? Oh, God. All right. Well, I'll just take the poison and we'll try and find a way out. I think I got turned around somewhere. Um, I've heard of Cornell, though. You got accepted there, but didn't get enough financial aid. Yeah, I mean, this is a big thing. I know this is a really big thing in the United States right now, talking about the affordability of university. Like, um, there is an example. I can't remember her name, but there's an example of a student who was accepted to Harvard, but went to uh, a state college in Texas. Um, because they gave a more attractive aid package. And I mean, in the end, she wound up at MIT to do, to do economics under Josh Angrist. So, um, yeah, I really got turned around here. Um. Still an amazing thing to talk about, though. You only really know about most of the colleges you want or know of because of lacrosse. Oh, you're a lacrosse player. Nice. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is it's, you know, everybody wants to get into a good school. Understandably so, right? It, it definitely opens some doors for you if you have, like, if you have Harvard Law on your resume, <laughs> um, you're going to find it a little bit easier to go and work for a top firm. At least get, like, an internship at a top firm. Um, although I kind of hope that somebody who goes to Harvard Law has more aspirations than to just do an internship. Um, but again, like, there's a reason why there's people who've been very successful without having to go to school, and that's because in the end, it's very much a matter of what you put into the experience, um, rather than expecting, like, a prof to just download knowledge. We sadly don't live in the Matrix yet, so. And yeah, 1984 is a really amazing book. Um, we actually used to do uh, readings on stream, so you can actually still see this in the highlights. Uh, we read Ernst Gombrich's A Little History of the World, and that's because, again, I play these games of, uh, like, Civilization and, um... 
I think this is such a clever puzzle that From put in here, the double the double secret doors. Um, the uh, sorry, I was talking nineteen eighty four colleges. Oh right, no, so the uh, readings. Um, I would never want to blow oop, any club. To who just followed? Like me for a member. Kaz the Minotaur, thank you very much for that. Uh, Thank you very much for that follow. So, uh, well, not exactly Pie of Reckoning in terms of no more readings. So what happened was uh, this channel was banned from Twitch for doing those readings. So uh, because of Crusader Kings 2 and uh, Civilization, we were doing a uh, reading of Ernst Gombrich's uh, children's book, A Little History of the World. And uh, the channel was banned because of the reading content. They said that it wasn't, uh, wasn't related to gaming and didn't count as creative. And so, in this case, um, I am just trying to find a way of incorporating the readings into the channel through another way. Um, probably what I'll wind up doing is just uploading them to YouTube. Uh, but we will return to them, but one of the things I was thinking of doing was actually George Orwell's uh, Animal Farm, which I think is another really wonderful book that he wrote. Maybe it doesn't quite have the same, uh, the same reputation that, um... Oh, I want that so bad. Uh, not gonna happen, though. Um... Doesn't quite have the same reputation that 1984 does, uh, but it definitely is a, a really great satire. Much shorter as well. Yeah, Goatherd, I mean, the, the problem with that, uh, what happened too, is that night we actually had a troll that stopped by the ch uh, channel as well. Um, so there had been a number of readings that... Um, Sorry, I completely forgot that you've got the badge on there. I know that's not uh, not under your department. Uh, I was just kind of speaking a little more generally. Um, so we'd done it before without a problem. And I mean, again, because it was... I mean, the majority of passages that we read were about Charlemagne, which is what we were playing in Crusader Kings 2. So like for me, it's just establishing setting. Like they were a portion of these Crusader to Kings 2 casts. So it could be a confounding factor that somebody, you know, who wanted to cause some trouble for the stream um, reported it and, um, you know, it maybe actually wasn't that big of a deal and that instead um, this was just, you know, somebody reporting the stream for ulterior motives. Um, but obviously, you know, I've never wanted to conduct the channel in any way but something that is in line with the terms of service. So clearly if I get a ban, um, my reading of the, of the TOS is different from from theirs. Um, I mean, again, would I prefer to do it on Twitch? Yeah, because people really enjoyed it. Um, but if they'd like me to take it to another platform, um, you know, I, I respect the decision. Like, obviously I'm getting, I'm getting free, uh, free hosting for this channel. So uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Um, Leah too. Personally, you want to get out of schools as fast as possible. Huge waste of time. You know perfectly well how to learn for yourself. I don't need someone spoon-feeding you information. Got a relevant job earlier than people going into schools, and you've been very successful in work life without any relevant schooling. That's a perfect example, actually. Um, yeah. Well, it's also t uh, tough to... Man, I'm, I'm... Actually, Leah too. I agree completely with what, I, what you've said. I mean, the, the biggest thing here is it depends so much on the individual, right? There are some individual... Like, for me, I, I really think, under economics, I am a better economist because I have been able to interact with the professors that I, I know, and they've really pushed me to do, to do work and think about things that uh, I never would have done had I not had that exposure. But that's personal to me, right? Um, I can't say to somebody else that they should go and study under the prof who I had as a guide, uh, you know, a guide for my undergraduate thesis. Um, because a lot of people find him very difficult uh, in terms of like the the expectations that he has, and it may just turn them off of empirical work. I mean, I think he's a really friendly guy. I don't I, I don't actually think that would be a legitimate criticism of him. But uh, but again, I can only speak to my own experience. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what Goatherd said with uh, troll reports and things like that, like again, I you know it's not. Um, It's not my place to... Like, again, I, I have my speculations. I... In the end, I can't re... I can't redo history. Oh, yep. Thank you so much for that host. I'll give you a shout-out. Actually, I can shout you out right now. 
Yeah, absolutely goat herd. I mean, um, I'm a little gun shy from it just because I don't want it to seem like, uh, sorry, I just need a second to unlock something. I definitely wanted to put some distance between me and the event because I don't want a, uh, I don't want it to become entangled as like a complaint about the ban because I know like they extend the ban if, uh, if they don't think it was a legitimate dispute. So I don't want it to be perceived as a, as a dispute, but I think when I'm, uh, you know, if I want to try and do something like that again, and if I think I can make a, a good case in terms of why it's a good um, a good addition to Twitch, uh, I'll email support and just say it's like, you know, here's what I'm thinking. Let me know if it's okay, and uh, and if not, obviously I'll go I'll go elsewhere. But for the time being, I'm just gonna say it's like, you know, I don't know if it's the troll who did it or if it's uh, if it's something that Twitch doesn't want. And uh, I figure when I'm ready to do another reading stream, then. Uh, then I can take it up. But I actually, I really appreciate you, um, you know, uh, offering uh, private messages for people. Because I know, like, one of the one of the things that really got me about that experience was I really felt like because of this rule where you get an extended ban if you dispute it, I kind of felt like I didn't have anybody I could talk to about it. Um, so having somebody who is affiliated with the platform coming in and chat and saying, hey, if you have any questions about it, please let me know or email support. Uh, is something that helps a lot. Um, it's definitely something I, I really could have used at that at that moment. So I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you doing uh, doing that service for us. I know it's a very thankless job because I suspect you're not going to have a lot of people ta seeing that badge in chat and saying, you know, you're doing a good job, my friend. You're probably going to get a lot of people talking about how Twitch could get better. But uh, guys, I'd like to take a minute here. I uh, shouted out Yip. Uh, he is somebody who I met through Seriously Clara's channel. Again, you probably know Clara, uh, especially because a lot of you have come through W. Shand. Whoo, that's uh, a little rich for me. Okay. You only YOLO once, chat. Run! Um... But yeah, I met Yep as a mod through Seriously Clara. Uh, you should all probably know her through W. Shantz, his girlfriend, wonderful streamer in her own right, partnered streamer, owner of Team Panda, the team that I uh, work with. And uh, Yip is somebody who actually did a Warframe co-cast with me. He's a really great guy, very supportive uh, on streaming. He's had a little bit of a hiatus from streaming, but he's been back with a vengeance. He's been doing a bunch of really interesting games, which I actually hadn't even heard of before. So this is one of, one of the really great things about Twitch, um, and in particular, actually, like, uh, both Yip and Leotu's uh, streams for us, they've introduced me to a bunch of games that I wouldn't have otherwise been exposed to. Um, so he's a really great guy, really friendly, and actually, so I know uh, the talk about philosophy was uh, met with a few groans in chat, so, uh, but I will say, for those of you who are interested in it, uh, Yip is somebody who is much better studied and definitely much more articulate on uh, on some matters philosophy. I mean, I can hold my own maybe on, like, symbolic logic and stuff like that, because that's what I wind up using in, uh, you know, in my own studies. Um, but Yip is definitely uh, somebody who has a very, a capacity for very deep thinking, but is a very friendly uh, in the way that he presents it. It's, it's kind of an aspiration that I would have in talking about some of these serious, more serious issues. Um, to be able to explain them uh, in depth, but in a way that isn't laden too heavily with jargon. And I think uh, Yip does a really good job of that. By the way, I've never been to this part of the, the map before. I'm purely exploring at this point. Um, Oh, college stress. Sorry, guys, I'm falling behind on chat because I'm monologuing so much. But let me just uh, let me just eliminate these cute little punching mushrooms, and uh, let me just catch up with chat for a second. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna move. I'm just gonna alt tab out for a second. I know you're not gonna have any audio for a second, but. Um Okay, paranormal death. Most of the classes you're taking for your senior year in high school is teaching us about how to survive the real world, taxes, debt, etc. I actually think those are really good uh, skills to have. I know when I was uh, in high school, I wasn't getting them. Uh, Leotu says, Onvar, there's some subjects where getting sort of the basics told to you from someone who really knows it are quite useful, and getting started is all difficult, but I rarely find it useful just to cling on somebody telling you everything. And I mean, again, this is definitely something that's hard to... You, you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Actually, I think I'm going to put on a little bit of music, guys, just so I can... Uh, um, 
I can't have the game audio up and read chat at the same time, unfortunately. So I'll give you a little something to listen to while I, I digest chat. It won't be too long. This is such a weird song to put on for the background. Um, but yeah, so in this case here, um, you can learn... Um, you can learn the principles of some things, right? But it's also important to remember that, especially in this environment, like, Twitch didn't exist um, when I, you know, started school. I'm pretty sure. Well, I mean, maybe some form of it did, but, like, um, like high school or that, I would never have the option of, uh, of doing some kind of, like, live stream like this. Now, you all just came from W. Shan. This is a guy who makes a living doing this. How can you, you know, what you have to do here is set yourself up with a set of skills that make you adaptable to these situations rather than take a course that's going to tell you here's, you know, the following uh, boxes that you need to tick. So sometimes people will learn better from guidance from an instructor and some people will learn better from, uh, from just kind of learning those principles on their own. And one way isn't necessarily better than another. Um, Fatal Clever Bart, that's completely different for me. Some things that you're learning right now that you never could learn on your own. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with a lot of my econ stuff. Um, it's not 65. College seems to be more for the experience anymore. You're proud that you have a degree, but it doesn't mean as much, and it hasn't gotten you far as other achievements in your life. Yeah, I mean, people are not defined just through their education. Uh, go to her friend with support. Uh, you can help as well. Thank you uh, for that. Cypher Steed ended up dropping out of college your last year. He's completely mentally exhausted. Did well in college, but being as stupid as you are, you had to study every moment of every day, every day. I don't think you're stupid, Cypher Steed. In fact, knowing when to throw in the towel is actually a very mature uh, and a very sensible move for some people. So we can talk about um, whether or not you should go back to school if you'd like, but uh, Goatherd, so then you aren't fully associated with feeling nervous about it and hurting you further. Uh, great, thank you for that, uh, Goatherd. Um, we've got some Clara love in the chat. Paranormal Death Suffer, I wouldn't say that it's being stupid. Yeah, again, so we've got a few people in here. I'm just going to skip over here. SC isn't the wisest person on Twitch. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm going to declare chat blackmail. Um, love to talk on stream with you so you can help keep me in tune with chat love to stream with me um oh you mean like come on so uh so you can keep me on track with uh with chat um all right i think i I've, i'm back on the page so we can uh focus on uh leo used to love math, math back when you were in school but since you got out of school you've used very little of it outside of algorithms that you've googled so nowadays you're not quite good at math yeah and i mean like for me uh the study of mathematics uh it's very satisfying to me but in the end i think it's a set of tools for thinking rather than being um like you know like the pythagorean theorem it's not i didn't learn it because i well actually i i do have to calculate <laughs> um triangles a few times but like it's more of the it's more of the relationship it's more about understanding why those things work together that I think is the value of mathematics it's not necessarily just you know you know uh, oh maybe one day I'm gonna need to calculate uh, you know the hypotenuse streamer studies major oh god Ponce is here oh out Jesus Christ that guy hits like a truck uh, I am stuck. GG, chat. <laughs> That's a dirty thing for the game to do, trap you on that. Goat Herd, thank you so much for that follow. Yeah, like this is, the, I think this is the big misconception about math stuff. Is that you don't, like... Yes, there is a very practical end to it, right? Like, it's... I get a little disturbed when I go to a store and the cash register doesn't work and the... the employee is a little uncertain about doing the sums. Um, like, I mean, again, I, I have a bit of an advantage. Like, I, I have to do this on a fairly regular basis. So, uh, so I'm well equipped to, like, doing... you know, doing some mental math, right? Um... And anybody who's seen my math homework knows that the math I do is absolutely mental. Um, but, uh, so I mean, again, this isn't to, like, this This is not to be an elitist about this stuff, right? Like, obviously I have a skill set and a set of circumstances of, in life that have led me to be 
okay at uh, at doing sums. Um, but it kind of bothers me a little bit that somebody is so uh, has such a lack of confidence in terms of their ability to do kind of basic arithmetic, which is something that we're kind of taught from the very beginning of school. Um, to uh, you know that they they kind of they're they're taking the computer's word for it basically, and I'm like, well, you know, some somebody had to program the computer, right? Like, there's um, there's very clearly a set of principles that you can understand to you know to be able to do what the computer's done. The computer does it more efficiently, um, but. Um, But yeah, like it's, uh, I just, you know, I kind of wish that people, one, would have a little bit more confidence in themselves. Um, and number two, that they would just understand that this is stuff that's worth, this was possibly a mistake. Um, you know, a little more confidence in themselves and maybe just a little bit more understanding that these are tools for thinking rather than a specific means to an end. Um... Because, again, there's so many times... I mean, we're in an election year where people are getting really scared about who the options are. And there's a lot of rhetoric uh, flying around in terms of, like, you know, this is true, that isn't true. You know, it, a Supreme Court has, you know, has had this long before they've been appointed, bet between that long, you know, they're right, they're wrong, so on and so forth. Like, there has to be a set of tools that you can use to understand... Um, there has to be kind of a set of tools that you can learn to to kind of learn discernment, right? To um, to be able to take a claim, to weigh it, and come to a conclusion, to evaluate a statement and say this is logically consistent. And mathematics is entirely about that. Now, again, some of this is uh, some of this is um, a little uh, sometimes it's a little arcane, right? Like so, you know. Woe betide any of you that need to do topology and find out that closed and open sets are not actually o uh, opposites and that there is a thing known as a clopen set, which I swear they made up on the spot. Um, so, I mean, that is, you know, that is definitely the definition of when am I ever going to use this? Well, for me, I'm going to use it a lot because I'm studying something stupid. Um, but I'm pretty sure all of you guys could go the rest of your life and not have to worry about whether or not uh, you knew that in topology closed and open sets are not opposites. Um, but the principles under which I know that to be true, the principles under which I can say that a, uh, you know, a set is closed or open and how the definition of these terms necessarily means that um, Uh, necessarily means that these can't be opposites. Um, that is the sort. That is the same thing under which you can say, you know, I'm voting for this candidate or I'm voting for that candidate because I think their platform is the best, or because I think they have, you know, the best advisors, or I like this policy, or I don't like this policy, or any of these other things on here, right? Um, it's it's not about you know here is this one time in the job I'm going to apply it. It's more um, this is. Uh, Am I going to die again because of a... But I want my souls. Why are you doing this to me, game? Um, there we go. Yeah, it's... um. Again, it's, it's hard to, like... The thing is, is that no instructor is going to be able to say to you, it's like, this is the moment in your life when you're going to need to use this line of reasoning. It's just, it's stuff that you internalize. And whether you do that through a school or whether you do that through, um, you know, through reading books and following your interests, um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, just stay, stay to that, uh, that core. Uh, in yourself. Guys, I did also shout out Ponce a little while there. Guys, uh, if you're looking for a good League of Legends streamer, and I don't play League of Legends and I like watching this guy, uh, he is another Vancouver streamer, an absolutely fantastic human being, very 
uh, warm, generous man, and uh, somebody who I, uh, I mean, first of all, deals with my crappy modding all the time, and um, he, uh, I don't know, like, I, I wouldn't have thought that there would be somebody who could, uh, I wouldn't have thought there's somebody who could be, um, you know, who could do a, a League of Legends stream that I would watch. Um, but he really does it. He manages to... He actually also plays Dark Souls, inter incidentally. Um, but uh, he's done really fantastic uh, league casts where even though I don't understand what's going on, like, uh, number one, he does do a lot of educational stuff. Um, but I think a little more importantly is that he, again, has that ability to entertain independent of whether or not you have kind of the prerequisites. So even though I don't play league, I... I understand, um, I understand what I need to know, and I have a lot of fun watching him. Uh, he also has a background in archaeology, so. You were willing to play along so you said warm and generous. Ponce has been very generous with the attention that he's given this stream, and when I say warm, uh, he is, he may not admit it, but he's actually a very, uh, he's a very nice guy, very, very patient, and, um, I know he's got this reputation for being a big badass that he has to maintain, but I gotta give credit where credit's due. By the way, I, I am sorry I haven't been 100% keeping up with chat. Uh, definitely feel free to repeat something uh, with my name tagged in it if there's uh, a point that you think is important that I missed. I am no good at this game. Get styled upon, mushroom men. So the thing I really hate about these guys is that they will do like a second, that second punch. And that will fuck you up. Again, one of the things I loved... I've spent almost no time talking about the Souls games. I'm sorry, I got... Jesus! Um, I spent almost no time talking about the, uh, the Souls games. But, um... One of the things that... Ouch! Um... I, I've always loved the uh, creature design. I think Fromm is so very good at kind of creating these terrifying or interesting looking uh, creatures. I kind of want to know what the stories behind some of them are. Should I even be trying to fight these things, I think is the question. Ooh. Um. That really sucks. I don't know where the closest blacksmith is. Ooh, gee. Woohoo! Ow. So I'm just trying to think if there's actually any point for me being down here. Uh, yeah, it looks like there's a path there, so... I really should have bought the blacksmith box. I'm in the wrong neighborhood. Ash Lake. I've never been here before. It's really beautiful. <laughs> this is mushroom country. <laughs> Um, all you know about Dark Souls is that it's hard, yeah. I mean, this is the big thing Fatal Clever bought, is that, um, there is a... Ooh, another Hydra. Ooh. 
I hate to do this, but I have to. Um, there's definitely a trend in indie games to just make things difficult seemingly for the sake of being difficult, uh, which is not a trend I'm very happy with. But um, I think... The really great thing about Dark Souls, so the, the first time I played this, I beat it uh, without consulting any kind of a walkthrough or a guide. One of the most satisfying feelings uh, I've had in a game, and in the end it's because he's going to start shooting water balloons at me. Oh god! That sucks. Um... The thing about this game is that you can only save at the, uh, at the bonfires. Okay, so I have to go through the log to, to get to where I need to go. Oop, there's something over there. I tried so hard, got so far, but in the end it doesn't even matter. Yeah. <laughs> this is your favorite area? Uh, it was just so weird compared to the rest of the game. Yeah, I mean... It's really interesting. Uh, like I said, I've, I was... Even though I... You know, I've played and beat the game, I had no idea this place even existed. Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me! I really should just fight it, but I, I've got a weak weapon, so I'm just going to take the loot and run. Um, but the, um, I think, so uh, you can only save at these, oh god, I'm going to have to fight no matter what anyway. All right, well. I don't know what you are, but... Oh wait, I think I remember. Ouch. Oh Jesus Christ, where did you come from? Okay, so I can do no damage to Mr. Clam Guy. Ah, but I can use friendly fire. Um, where did the Hydra go? Ah, there we go. Why? Why is this a thing? This game sucks! <laughs> I'm so scared right now! <laughs> Please throw the water balloons! Please throw the water balloons again! Ouch! Is the clam dead? Nope. Oh, but it's at low health, so... <laughs> Wrong neighborhood. Um, but yeah, so... As you can see, this game is very difficult. Um, but it, it forces you to keep trying and to keep, um, keep getting better. To... Not to, like, save once you've gotten past uh, one element, but, like, to just keep keep getting better, keep improving, to embrace failure and keep coming back. Um, and I think that's the real appeal of this game, is that it's not just difficult for the sake of difficulty, um, but it's actually very carefully calibrated 
to make sure that the challenge that, challenges that you face are challenging because they want the reward for overcoming it to be so uh, so great. And I think that's uh, I think that's what really keeps me coming back to this game. And I, I'm really looking forward to playing uh, playing Dark Souls 2. Um, but I wanted to... I wanted to, um... Ah! Um, I wanted to at least do on stream um, the experience of Dark Souls 1s before I do a, a, a blind playthrough of number 2. As the saying goes, what kills you makes you stronger. Exactly, Marfos. And I don't think I said hi to you yet. Welcome. This game is bullshit. Uh, so for those of you who are not familiar with Dark Souls, uh, when you die, you leave a a corpse, surprisingly. Um, but the idea here is that you actually need to recover it. Uh, if you don't recover it before you die the next time, you lose all of your souls. So in this case, I'm making a long pilgrimage to my corpse, hoping to... Oh, right, I can't, can't do that. Hoping I do not get eaten or shoved or punched by clams uh, and I'm hoping that the water balloons don't spell the end of me as well uh, I do feel that paranormal death but again it is also important by the way somebody was asking me about school stress earlier uh, if somebody still wanted an answer to that I'm happy to give it um, the important thing, though, is that uh, it is ultimately, like, you can decide in terms of how you respond to that, uh, that incentive, right? Um, there's no, there's no rule saying that you have to, um, you know, that you have to, to become twitchy about your grades. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a certain element of that because you want to, you know, you want to get a good job at the end of this stuff, but, um... It's definitely perfectly respectable to, um... You know, to go, to pursue an education. Oh, come on! Alright, I'm just gonna go back to the other side, because he seemed to, seemed to be willing to play ball on the, the other side of the map. That was probably not the place to hit that flask. Hey, sister, give me some cover. I hate you, Clem. Ugh. Okay, well, at least I got my souls back. So, in this sense, other than maybe a bit of damage to my durability, um, I, I don't have any... Um, I don't have any real consequence for that death because I already picked uh, picked that stuff up. Uh, Marfos, you played Demon Souls, the international version, when the series began. Uh, it was your first and only game to ever rage quit for six months on, and the US version came out and was so much more easy, so you went back, played, and beat the harder version. So you actually are describing my experience with Dark Souls. I couldn't get past the boar um, early on in the game. I stopped playing for quite some time. And then I kind of went back, got back on that horse, and uh, played through to completion. It's very, very rewarding. Haha, <laughs> joke's on you. Although I think he just aggroed. Nope, they're still okay. So I'm gonna try engaging uh, 
Try engaging the Hydra on this side. Is it going to do anything? Okay, guess not. See, the one drawback here is that there's no blacksmiths in the immediate area, so I need to... Oh god, what do I even do to, to repair my stuff? I'm going to have to do it before Quelag for sure. Oh, that's brutal, Marfos. All right. As much as I really like Ash Lake, uh, I got to admit, I, I need to repair. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's an easy way back home, so we are in for a bit of a hike. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things I'll say, too, if you guys are interested in... Uh-oh, wrong neighborhood. Uh, if you guys are interested in taking up Dark Souls, I really strongly recommend uh, giving it a try. And I also recommend do yourself the favor and try to avoid the temptation of letting other people play the game for you. Um, and I, by that, I mean, like, try not to check out walkthroughs. It's going to be very tempting because the game is difficult, seemingly impossible at points. Um, but that, that, there's a reason why this game is so beloved. It's not, like, it's not just, you know, you, you brag to all your friends, um, that you beat, like, here's the big thing for me, is like, I'd feel kind of cheap saying to everybody, I beat Dark Souls because I read the right walkthroughs, right? Um, this is a game that is very well designed. It is a game that will give you challenges but challenges that you are perfectly capable of overcoming. And so don't, uh, don't cheat yourself out of, uh, of having that really rewarding experience of having beaten something on your own account. Um, now, a lot of you are probably already familiar with Dark Souls, um, but again, I'll, I'll tell you that uh, it took a lot of effort, um, but it's one of the most satisfying experiences I've ever had to finally say, finally take down Gwyn and um, and say that this was purely, uh, purely an effort, uh, or sorry, purely a result of um, of hard work and uh, practice. And uh, I can't remember how I get up. And again, I, I just I I feel like it wouldn't have uh, it wouldn't have been the same. It would have been such wouldn't have been such an electric experience if I uh, if I let somebody. Could be worse. <laughs> um, if I let somebody else uh, win it for me, basically. I mean, again, uh, to each their own. But. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the reason why this game has the reputation that it does is it's not difficult for the sake of difficult. It's difficult because they've just found kind of the breaking point uh, between unfairly difficult and... Uh, okay, that's unforgivable that I did that twice. Let's try and look down on my character, shall we? Um, but yeah, I think I think the the thing that really is great about this game is that uh, they they know how to how to give you just enough pain um, to make the uh, the moments of victory that much sweeter. Okay, anybody got any bright ideas about how I'm supposed to get up here? Uh, the Gwyn fight was hard with all my yes. Um, 
Smell was really hard with his butt stomps. Um, and then Gwyn was a little bit difficult, although I did find that Gwyn tends to get caught on a lot of pillars. So once I was able to run to pillars... Um, once I was able to run to a bunch of, uh, of pillars, I was, uh, I was okay on that fight. Is there really no way back up on this tree? What the hell is wrong with me? Uh, Fatal Cleverbot. It's always nice to have a wide variety of streamers to watch. The ones There's one with, with penis jokes every line, and then the more intellectual ones like you, which you find really enjoyable. I really appreciate you saying that, Fatal Cleverbot. Um, I mean, I did refer to Havel's club as a petrified dragon dick, so I do occasionally deliver penis jokes. I'm just not as good at delivering them. Walk the opposite way along the wall. FOUR TIMES! <gasps> I'm not highlighting this. I'm a little confused by, um... Opposite way. El Canoe! My friend, guys, I'm gonna take a minute here, especially because I'm utterly embarrassing myself. Uh... With somebody getting a, uh, somebody talking about, you know, it's nice to have a variety. Ah, there's the ladder. Thank you, guys. Um, I want to take a minute here and say El Canoe is a French streamer. Um, I actually, so I've been meaning to put a blog post up explaining exactly how I found his stream. One night I was looking for uh, Satellite Rain. I wanted to see whether or not it was a game that I would enjoy. And all of the English streamers didn't talk during the game, and they made it look quite boring. I almost gave up, but I've also wanted to kind of brush up on my French and get better. And so uh, it just so happened that El Canoe was uh, streaming the game. Now, again, my French is very rusty, as I like to say. Uh, I speak French like I've just suffered a stroke or severe brain damage. Um, but with that in mind, uh, extremely friendly. has a bot that will let you know that you're in the channel. So you, you, can't, you can't help but escape. Or you say you, you can't escape uh, a very friendly hello from El Canoe. Um, and again, even though it's a French stream, um, I had the time of my life there. He is a very gifted entertainer, a absolutely sublime sense of comic timing. Um, and he's got a really great taste in video games. Um, I have found so many new and interesting titles like Apotheon and, um, what was another one? Invertus Virbus, uh, was another one that he was playing. Um, so if you guys are looking for diversity, I'd say even if you aren't necessarily French speakers, um, El Canoe is a good stream. Now again, just keep in mind that it is, uh, it is not my intention to turn his uh, stream into an Anglophone stream. Uh, just because he can speak um, English doesn't mean that I, I want him to, to change. Um, but I'm merely communicating here that his, uh, his stream is actually uh, very good to watch and very entertaining to watch even as somebody who doesn't understand the language. I actually think it's a really good lesson for people who um, I think it's a very good lesson for people who want to become streamers. If you watch how he communicates, how fun that stream is to watch, even though you don't necessarily understand the words being spoken, um, it's just a communication in terms of how good um, the interactivity is and how he is able to communicate so much through, um, through the other cues. He, is, uh, he has a hell of a community. Um, in fact, his mod Pumpaneko uh, occasionally stops by. It's always a pleasure to have in chat. Uh, he himself is such a pleasure to have in chat. But uh, again, I think as somebody who really has a very keen sense in terms of what works uh, for entertainment on Twitch, I cannot say enough good things about him. And uh, again, he's... Uh, it, I think it's also kind of nice. I, I really like promoting the stream because uh, I think it's sometimes a bit of a shame. That, I mean, obviously English is a very dominant language, um, but I think it's really great that it's not just that there are streams out there that are able to retain a viewership because they're the only option in the language, um, but I count El Canoe as, some, as one of the finest streamers that I've watched um, and that it is a Francophone stream, that it's a, a stream that is in, in his native language and that people are able to have, you know, a very, like a legitimately good 
um, entertainment option um, uh, in their in their own language, uh, not just kind of like a subtitled English stream or something like that. So, <laughs> yes, and he always says I make him him blush, but he should absolutely be taking a bow for his uh, his abilities. There's always something I learn watching his stream, and again, it's uh, it's sometimes difficult to recommend to an English speaking audience because I know. Uh, I'm already testing everybody's patience with my talk of economics in school while I'm playing, you know, the hardcore Dark Souls game. Um, but, uh, so again, uh, I understand that French may not be everybody's cup of tea, it may not be understandable to everybody. Um, but with that in mind, I would say, especially if you are somebody who's interested in getting into streaming and you want to understand how there's really no excuse uh, when it comes to... Um, you know, to being able to get your message across, being able to communicate effectively. Um, if you want to learn, um, I, I would actually say, so if you want two people to watch, uh, to understand how, how you can put on a good show in terms of viewer interaction and, uh, you know, and just having a, a good time, um, I would say the combination of Elkanu and Shand are kind of my, t my twin, twin guiding lights, uh, in terms of, uh, of streaming ability. And again, I'm getting a little bit better at French uh, since watching his stream, so that's a nice, uh, a nice side effect. But I come on to I come on to Twitch to be entertained first. So, and he is uh, he is a very gifted entertainer, even if he feels like he's uh, he needs to blush whenever I talk. <laughs> you know, parler and merde. <laughs> Now, we know there's a faster exit out of Light Town, um, but I don't remember where it goes. <laughs> I need to put that as a quote, Elkanu. That's a really good one. Uh, the man who's entertaining without a face. It's only because if I, if I were to take my face, it actually takes away from the value of the cast. <laughs> Removing my face is added value. You speak very little French, but you know some, so... Target is a French-owned store- is- Or is this this Target business? <laughs> Actually, I was gonna say too, I, I tend to make a bunch of stupid French jokes, so one of the games that we've been playing uh, recently is uh, L.A. Noir, or as I like to call it, uh, Rockstar's French existentialist- French existentialist detective thriller, La Noir! The black. Um, Elkanu, when you feel down, I just come to your channel and your words automatically make me of it. That is really nice of you to say, Elkanu. Um, I know, I think one of the biggest things for me is that I don't think it's enough just to say that somebody is a good caster. I really want to give people reasons as to why I think they are, so, they are worth the time, because time is very precious and uh, my only regret about your stream is that I do not have, I don't get a chance to see it as often as I would like. Um, and that is just how time zones work, unfortunately. So, um, you are, like I said, you're a really great entertainer. Um, and I, I consider myself very lucky. I mean, what kind of coincidence is it that I was looking for satellite rain, um, and all of the English casters sucked, so I needed to go and find the French wonder of El Canoe. <laughs> um, you know, it's, I, I absolutely love it. It's one of the things that I really like about Twitch because in the end it's about people and uh, to be able to meet uh, not just a caster who's as good as yours, but you've really built a great community. Actually guys, it's also worth mentioning, El Canoe has done uh, a really great job with XCOM 2 and he's had phenomenal growth in his channel recently. Um, so it's a really exciting time to, to be watching this channel because I really think he's starting to get kind of the following that he deserves. There's a lot of people who are, uh, are kind of becoming aware of, of his, his channel and uh, I think it's really great because I think he, uh, he deserves that kind of attention. I think at this point maybe I should just switch to the spear. No, the durability is still there.
Let's see what the Winged Spear does, just in case. Feel like I'd be a good speaker if you put a face cam and it will let us talk to me better? Really? I've never thought about it that way. Um, I mean, there's a, a couple of people on Team Panda who are actually considering on going camless. I know it's a difficult format to do. Like, I can't do games like uh, Transistor because in the end, uh, Transistor is... Um, it has really wonderful voice acting. And so I feel like I am, I'm talking over it um, too much. Oh, Jesus. That is not the way to do that. Screw the poison. I gotta... I gotta get to the bonfire. Okay, so I can afford to put on my halberd. Um, I'm really trying to find the second exit to Blight Town. Um... A bit narcissistic to sit there and call yourself beautiful when you take away from the stream. Oh no no, so I mean like what I'm, what I'm tr- <laughs> Uh, definitely not what I mean <laughs> in that sense. Um, but uh, a good example of this actually would be there's a streamer on uh, Team Panda, Jesse Quill, whose facial expressions absolutely make- it's to my right. Uh, so Choldus, based on where I am right now, do I need to go up or do I need to go further to the right? Um, but like Jesse Quill has tried a couple of uh, camless streams and she does that format quite well but her facial expressions uh, really really make her stream like she's very good at um, she's very good at pushing up okay uh, she's very good at like kind of giving um, giving body language as well as uh, as her her dialogue so in that case, I would kind of consider it a little bit of a shame if she were to stop uh, to stop doing that. But, I mean, in the end, people decide what they do. I really like it when people experiment with their, uh, with their streams. Um, and in my case, I know a lot of people talk about my voice. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm able to... You know, in this case, I'm able to leverage the fact that this is something that people seem to enjoy. Uh, and kind of twist that towards my advantage where, you know, right now I don't have a webcam. Uh, so in this case... You know, I don't even have the option of doing uh, a cam stream at the moment, unless I were to go back to my laptop. But, uh, I don't know, it seems to work in its current format, and uh, I'm willing to experiment with some other, other ideas later on down the road. I'm just gonna hide in here for a second and see... See if I can... Alright. Elkanu, when you have a nice voice and you constantly entertain with your voice, I think a ca face cam isn't necessary. Oh, Elkanu, now you're making me blush, but you can't tell because I have no cam. <laughs> you don't remember from here, you're on your own, kid. Damn it! <laughs> uh, torches mark, the ladder's up. Sorry, guys, I'm just finishing the last of my coffee. Cam only stream in the future. My my reactions. <laughs> oh, hang on. I think I know. I think I know uh, where this exit is. Uh, there are some streamers that a face cam is needed 100%. Uh, you follow a couple of pastors on Twitch. Uh, and a lot of people say a face to fit the voice makes it easier to share their problems with them. That is really... Uh, that's a very interesting insight, actually. Um, I never quite thought about it that way. But I can I can definitely see the, um, the point. I mean, I definitely appreciate that there is a certain degree of, um, of interactivity that is lost because I don't have facial expressions. Um, again, I don't feel that it's a complete impediment, um, and this is because it's maybe worth mentioning that one thing I really like, I actually, I'm really surprised that this type of, 
um, that this type of broadcast hasn't come back with podcasting, but I really enjoy like the old BBC radio dramas, things like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I love the book too, but the uh, the BBC radio drama was pretty good as well. And um, I don't know, radio drama, ev like even let's say radio advertising, uh, is really great because it really lets you capture, like, it, it lets you use more of your imagination. Um, now I understand why radio drama isn't a big thing right now. Uh, in Canada, we shut down, like, our last major soundstage, uh, to record radio dramas. But, um, I think one of the great things about it is, is that it's a way of sort of letting you capture your imagination. So there's this old saying in terms of, like, radio advertisers, uh, you know, like a radio exec and a TV exec are, are kind of talking about how good their various media are. And, um, you know, the radio guy points out that, you know, he can turn Niagara Falls, fill it up with whipped cream, get the Royal Canadian Air Force, you know, flying over it, shooting fireworks, um, and have it done, like, by the afternoon. Like, very clearly, um, you have a lot of a very expressive power, um, by uh, by focusing on audio only. It's not necessarily something that I leverage that heavily in my own stream because again, there's less imagination that's required when I also have this uh, gaming component. Um, you know, the... Uh, when I have the... Um, oop, this will be bad if I die. Um, obviously, I'm not able to lever as, leverage as much of the imagination uh, because I've got this gaming component as well. Um, but again, I also, before I went into school, I listened to a lot of um, like lectures on my iPod. Um, Yale Open Courseware was actually something I really enjoyed, so I like re listening to Robert Schiller's lectures on finance and things like that. And so, uh, in some senses, I, I do get a lot of satisfaction from, um, from just the spoken word. Uh, I think quite a bit about words, about rhetoric, about um, the right way to say things. Um, I'd actually, I'd be honest, I, one day I'd like to get into voice acting, although I think I need to become a little bit more expressive um, and also gain a little bit more range in terms of the different kinds of characters. So like, you know, if I were to play a Slavic character, I think the best I could do is, Wow, I'd like to suck your blood! Or, hello ladies, I have a question for you. Um, you know, kind of this, uh, this very goofy uh, kind of group. Whereas, you know, whenever I play um, Shadowrun, uh, Shadowrun Hong Kong, uh, which I think you just recently bought, Elkanu, it's a really wonderful game. Uh, if there's a Slavic character in there, I usually just try and take the affectation of the, you know, the Russian speakers that I know, usually doing things like dropping the, uh, the definite article, an indefinite article, things like that. So um, I went to market rather than I went to the market. Um, <laughs> you thought you were in Russia. <laughs> Big party, floor three. Um, but, uh... But yeah, just, um... It, to me, it's a fun little experiment to see how much I can do in terms of entertaining through voice only. But like I said, it, it limits the kinds of games that I can do. And I understand that there's uh, a level of expression that I don't necessarily get across because I don't have, uh, I don't have a face to attach with it. And we don't give up, Duke Paulus. I have to, I have to kill the fatties. Someone gifted it to you. The, I, that person is uh, a very good person, Elkanu. Uh, Shadow and Dragonfall is probably my favorite RPG that I played uh, last year. And probably, I don't know if um, Gods Will Be Watching or uh, Shadow and Dragonfall counts as my favorite story. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to buy the uh, blacksmith box off of the...
Top of the guy. Russia, it felt more like Sweden. Wasn't that convincing? <laughs> Radio is also way better at drawing in and interacting with listeners uh, than TV with its viewers. That's interesting, actually. I mean, again, I definitely feel like there is still power in, in radio. I know it doesn't quite get the attention, um, but it's... Uh, I mean, especially in the case of Canada, where we have the CBC, um, there's... Uh, I feel like there's... Um, I still feel like there's life in that, that media. You have to play both anyways. Yeah, I'll can do. I, I haven't played all the way through uh, Hong Kong, so I definitely recommend uh, Dragonfall first because Hong Kong introduced a new, uh, a new hacking mechanic. The new version of hacking is actually much better. Um, so I think if you go from uh, Hong Kong down to Dragonfall, you're going to get a little disappointed with the hacking sequences. Um, but they're, they're wonderful games. Uh, I really like Harebrain Schemes. They, they did an absolutely fantastic job with it. And it's really a type of game that I really enjoy streaming because, again, uh, lots of written dialogue, really interesting story, and I get, to, I get to really get into portraying the characters, which is something I like to do. Um, and uh, I think Dragonfall really outdid itself with the, uh, the subplots the like the extra characters there's a character in their glory who's just got this really heartbreaking really dark uh story about how she became the way that she was and i was i was floored through it just the whole thing is is great um it's really it's really satisfying storytelling only played the very first shadow run so are you talking about shadow run returns or are you talking about um, like the Genesis and Super Nintendo games. I mean, I like Shadowrun Returns, but once they released Dragonfall, uh, that was so obviously a DLC that just surpassed its, uh, its original, uh, the original in, in so many ways. Oh, there you are. Shadowrun Returns, yeah. Again, it's, it's good, but... Never I, when your days are numbered. <laughs> I can't even begin to explain um, how much better. Like, it's kind of like Shadowrun Returns. They were figuring out just how to make the basic game. And then Shadowrun Dragonfall really showed how they're able... You know what? I might as well get the bottomless box as well. Um, I think Shadowrun um, Dragonfall really showed what... Now, don't squander your time um, chatting. What kind of stories you can tell in that uh, in that game? Very. Oh, thank you. I just again, I, I'm I'm at a loss for words. It's it's such a such a good game. I mean, I like the combat in it because it's a little bit like XCOM, um, but you have you know you have a story motivating the combat sequences rather than the individual uh, rather than the individual. Um, how do I put it? Like, it's, it's not a collection of missions. It's a story taking you between these different combat sequences. Oh, come on! I'm not even going to go back and... Oh, no, I kind of have to get the soul. No, I don't have to get the souls. I should have just homeward boned. I'm not going to waste a soul pack on this stuff. I'm just going to go kill. Kill some baddies. It's 6 in the morning and you have class tonight. What time is class, cl uh, Fatal Cleverbot? By the way, uh, I'm a little curious for the people who haven't uh, weighed in on this. Are there how many Dark Souls players are actually in chat right now? Mostly, I just want to know who's face palming super hard at me right now. <laughs> 6 p.m. Ah, you've got time. 304, of course. Physical chemistry <laughs> reminds me of Tinder. Get out of the... Ah, poison. Alright.
Have it, but don't play it. Uh, Elkanu, have you done this? Dark Souls is probably your favorite game right now, uh, but I'm really good for somebody on their second playthrough. Tried it once for five minutes, decided the controls were everything you hated, and quit. Yeah, this is the only game that I play uh, with a controller. I'm definitely a mouse and keyboard man, but this game is unplayable with keyboard controls. Thank you for the uh, compliment, by the way, Duke Paulus. You've never played it. Oh, Elkanu, do yourself the favor. This is a this is a beautiful game. Um, it's not easy, but all right. Let's get rid of some crap. Okay, I'll keep the... The only reason I'm hanging on to all of this stuff is because I'll eventually be able to sell it to... Um, to the dragon. Greek Club's actually a pretty good weapon. Um, I'll maybe consider hanging on to that. I'll take the wing spear over the partisan. I'll keep at least one of the uh, one of each on the ranged weapons. There's no like weight bonus to doing this. This is just mostly so I don't have to um, I don't have to worry about inventory management as much. I'll keep the spider shield just in case. And I don't know what I'm doing with armor yet, so I'll just hang on to these. Sorcery castings I don't need, um, won't worry about Ring of Sacrifice, and I don't like the blue Tearstone Ring compared to the Wolf's Ring and the Ring of the Evil Eye. Uh, your controller isn't working, and yeah, it's definitely not, uh, not good without a, um, without a controller. Death by Camera is not something you would enjoy. Oh, you mean like when I walk off the edge of the, the world? Um, actually, Duke Paul, I mean, so yes, except that the reason why I fell off the edge there was I locked the camera onto an enemy, so it's, I, I kind of see what, uh, Leah 2 is saying there. Only play a Rocket League and Freestyle 2 Street Basketball with a controller while on PC, of course, but you do have the consoles, and everything else is mouse and keyboard. Uh, pure Counter-Strike keyboard and mouse sort of guy. I should use the Grass Kels Crest Shield, it's incredibly good. Let's take a look. Oh, I put it away, didn't I? I think it's a little heavy for me right now, but let's, um... Let's give it another look. The big thing here is I'm not relying a lot on dodging, um, so I really like 100% physical damage uh, sort of things, but let's, um... Let's put it in the inventory and do a quick, uh, a quick look -up. Okay, so I won't count uh, the stability against it. Uh, better for magic, same for fire and lightning. Um, but I, I see the deal breaker for me is the physical. Um, It's only one more than the heater, and it makes your stamina regen fa Really? Hmm. I mean, the stamina is kind of tempting. Oh! That was kind of dumb of me, but fair enough. Stamina regen is worth the 5% physical, in your opinion. Hmm. Um... Actually, you know what? Screw this. Um, I am not even going to try to do Quelag without some help. But I think I'm I'm done pussyfooting around. I think it's time that we uh, 
I think it's time that we take on the Spider Queen. Now what's probably going to happen here is I'm going to get invaded and I'm going to get really angry. Um, but that's Dark Souls. So. Uh, generally considered the best shield in the game. Hmm. And fail cut, you find Dark Souls to be much more realistic because you get hit with a sword, you're obviously going to take a lot of damage no matter how buff or strong you are, as opposed to other games where getting hit only takes a bit of health based on your stats. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think, I, I actually, guys, I do appreciate the advice on things like the Grass Crest Shield. Um, I know some people get really... So, like, I don't necessarily consider that backseating because you guys present it very respectfully. It's like, hey, you should consider rather than, you idiot, why don't you? Um... But in this case, I'm going to take it as advice. I'm going to keep the heater shield for now, uh, but I am going to keep it in my inventory because I, I didn't appreciate the stamina bonus, and that is actually something that I would consider... Um, that is something I would consider as a... Uh, as a factor. Um, but in this case, I think we're going to see how badly I get killed by Quilag, uh, which means I get to run like a madman and try to avoid invasion. Oh, man eater Mildred. All right. Ouch. So, uh, for those of you not familiar with Dark Souls, man eater Mildred, this red lady who I am about to fight, basically is sort of simulating. It's simulating the experience of another player invading your game. Um, so. It's possible to actually do this to other people. Now, you know this is not another player because I am able to kind of get these backstabs and vanquish them pretty quickly. But, um... But basically, because I have humanity right now, or because I'm in human form, uh, anybody who's playing this game right now could possibly invade. And again, people who invade are usually better equipped than you are. And so it generally translates into your death, although the way that you can make the invasion fail is by, um... The way you can make the invasion fail is by getting to the boss. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely get Mildred to help with Quileg. Uh, Dark Souls and a ah, more Zika virus. Dark Souls and a couple other games while taking realistic damage also takes armor into consideration when your damage is taken. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I like about uh, about Dark Souls. Um, I think um, again the fact I think one of the big factors for me uh, in terms of the appeal. I should probably just skip these uh, boulder rolling jackasses. Where did I get that Thorland talisman? Uh, I got that from Petrus in the opening, uh, Sir Friend Zone. I don't know if I know this already, but boss health increases when you have allies. Oh, I didn't know that actually. Um, thanks for sharing that. I'm still going to have the ally just because I think getting somebody to tank uh, Quilag is, um, is worth it. Um, but definitely, like, I'm, I've got a completely different build from what I did last time, so. She's one tanky independent woman who doesn't need no man. So. I don't think I have anything like gold pine resin, um, to... I don't think I actually have any weapons. Um, that I can use for this fight, now that I think of it. Alright, I kinda need to go to the bathroom, but screw it, let's, uh... Let's go. Alright, if you are offended by hair-covered breasts, look away. And also, if you find this sexy, you've got something deeply wrong with you. Again, the monster design in this game is absolutely... incredible. I, I, I don't know where this stuff comes from. It's it's just fantastic. This is the stuff 
about nightmares. This is actually such a great little bit of cinematic as well. Um, I mean, obviously there's a bit of titillation with the uh, with the reveal on the chest, but just to see that smile uh, before you begin what's a super tough boss fight is uh, is absolutely fantastic. Um, Mildred, help! <laughs> I should have equipped stuff that's fire resistant. You idiot! What are you doing? Well, that was quick. <laughs> um, I think... I think I just stood in fire for that. I'm not entirely sure what I did wrong, but fair enough. I'll take my lumps. That was a really bad, bad run. System Chalk is kink shaming? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, guys. You're all unique, beautiful people in your own way. Fortunately, I've got lots of humanity. <laughs> so. Let you be on stream with me. But it's my stream. Is this just so you can say that I'm... I'm really bad? <laughs> Enough to save Solaire? Oh right, yeah, somebody let me know that apparently if I have 30 humanity I can save Solaire. Alright, I really didn't want to aggro that guy, but I should be fine. No. Oh, because I'm not bad. So I thought you said no because you're bad. I'm like, what the hell? Saving Solaire makes the Gwyn fight so cathartic. So is there a different, um, is there a different ending that you get when you save Solaire? Okay. So what's probably going to happen is I'm going to die in an equally stupid way. And I'm going to wonder how I win this terrible, terrible fight. <laughs> You just keep being you, Maneater Mildred. Oh right, that friggin' sword. <laughs> the halberd! It does nothing! Help! <laughs> God, this is such a terrifying enemy. That's that sword alone, like the animation of the sword is just so good. Help! How do you miss a spider like this? I didn't think that would be possible. By the way guys, I do actually have a mild arachnophobia, but generally not for um... Actually, it's not as bad as it used to be anyway, but uh, generally not for animated stuff. Woo! That was a close one. Um, 
Mildred, I don't mean to tell you your business, but perhaps standing in fire is not the done thing. So here I just kind of want to kite her back to the NPC because I have a feeling I am in for a very rough time, especially with that sword. I also can't hit worth a damn. Actually, that's a really good point, uh, Duke Paulus. Let's see if I can change really quickly. Because obviously, I mean, the shield's going to do nothing for me at this point. Jesus Christ. Um, oh no! Jesus. We're not dead, so that's a thing. Unfortunately, Mildred's almost done, so... I can't quite figure out what the tell is for the AoE either, so... Okay, just back off. Let's not get cocky. Easy. We did it, Reddit. I also normally don't change <laughs> weapons mid-fight. It means nothing, but I wrote it. <laughs> Have you ever saved? You can save Quileg? And we ring the second bell. Probably sends Fortress because I am a glutton for punishment. For those of you who've not played Dark Souls, this thing that just opened up, uh, sends Fortress, is the reason why men keel over at 55. <laughs> it is just. Everything horrible <laughs> that this game can throw at you. Wait, there's a... There's like a chamber with a guy I should be able to talk to and use this fire, uh, Firekeeper's soul. Maybe it's lower. Oh, 
Uh, by the way, guys, thank you very much for that recommendation on the Grass Crest Shield. Uh, that was absolutely the right call for that fight when I went two-handed. Um, do not use that soul. Uh, why? So why would I want to save it? Oh, you know what? We could go after the um, Ceaseless Discharge. If anybody feels like, you know, immediately... Oh, right! Um, I've got souls I can use. Okay, uh, so what can I equip now? I've got uh, 67 for equip load, so... Half of that is 33 and a half... And then half of that would be... Oh my god, why does it have to be 33? If you use it, you can never relight the Fire Link Shrine bot. Oh, okay. Oh wow, I've really... Uh, really pushed up my... Um, my stats. Uh, okay, let me think about my uh, my weight. So basically, I want to retain the role that I have, so I can only have a quarter of my equip load. Sixty-seven uh, divided by four is six. And three quarters. So I've got 2.45 to work with. There is not a lot I can do with that. So this is 0.6. Okay, well, you know what? How about I just go about this the other way? I consider this full... I really like this set. Um, and then I just see how much I'm over. Okay, so I'm 18, so I need to remove one and a quarter. I feel like the chest piece is probably the best way to accomplish that. Well, that removes a little bit more than one and a quarter, but uh, the question is, do I want the Sorcerer Cloak? So basically I need something that's 2.65. So I can do... let's see the difference between Shadow Garb and Sorcerer Cloak. So better, weaker on magic by quite a bit. Um, and the same or better on the others. Let's try the Shadow Garb. It's a weird looking le uh, setup, but... Uh, one soul of Lost Undead will get me another level. Okay, actually... Wait, what's the difference? I guess I need two more levels to equip what I want. So, 3.9 I need... Um, Where was I? 16.4, so I have an additional 0.35. And I need... So 3.9, 2.3, so that's a 1.6 difference. So I need two levels. You know what? I think it's time to... You're right, it's time to pop some of these soul packs. Um, I think this kind of time I'm just going to use the large and see what it gives me. And I need 
quite a bit, actually. I'm a little surprised I don't have um, any souls of the hero yet. I think I'm just shy. Oh, that's so frustrating. You know what? Sorry, bro. I made a terrible mistake! I doomed Solaire! <laughs> I didn't know! Did I mis- oh god, did I really miscalculate this? I am still three quarters off. <sighs> I don't want to use any more soul packs, so let's just call it a mistake and... You'd best hope find an egg vermifuge? Oh, do I have an egg growing on me now? I don't think I see an egg growing on me yet. You should see an egg on, like, your head, right? I always thought it was the servants who gave it to you, not the worms. Um, but, I mean, I'm not gonna let, like, I, s I haven't checked for walkthroughs on this. Um, I do remember getting egged at one playthrough, but I always thought, like, it's, it's really easy to, like, um, confound those two elements, right? Like, I don't, I don't really know if, um, wait, am I not wearing boots? Oh, right, because of the, the dress. Um, Dusta Rhymes, I don't know anything about the classes in, um, in the new Dark Souls. Um, yeah, I don't know, I think the, uh, the butler to, um, to Quilag's sister should tell you. Okay, actually guys, I'm a little mystified here. I remember there is a way to, um... There's like Quilag's sister somewhere in here. And I, for some reason, don't remember the direction. Does anybody happen to recall what I'm missing? This is like trying to find that exit to Blight Town. I've gone dumb. A 
Under the bell lever. On a flat section of wall. Okay. Oh, so it is a secret passage. All right. Uh, here, right? I don't have Skype Black Iron Caliber. Uh, yeah, I, I was just trying to see if I could find out um, if I had an egg. I remember her dialogue is actually really heartbreaking. <laughs> So it's his line of saying that he doesn't have, um... If you lay a hand on the fair lady, you should be prepared to face my wrath. I think the fact he says I don't have any eggs, um, is the tell that I haven't been... ...infected, right? I'll just double check my appearance. Look at a handsome man. I'm going to say not egged. Oh, I was actually curious. So, um, for those of you who know this game a little bit better, I killed uh, Kirk Knight of Thorns three times in the playthrough that I did, and I think his body wound up here. Uh, is that how you get the Knight of Thorns armor? You have to kill him three times, or is it just coincidence? Uh, and that's something that happens on its own. All right, Duke Paulus, thanks a lot for hanging out. Uh, it was great to have you in here. And actually, for everybody, I know it's been a long time since W. Shand hosted me, and I'm actually surprised and delighted that so many of you have hung out. So uh, I think it's really great. I, obviously, I should probably say at this point, um, you know, I uh, obviously I can't say goodnight to all of you. I think I'm going to try at least to go a little bit further, maybe to the first bonfire in Sun's Fortress or something like that. Um, but obviously my hours are going to be a little bit different from yours. And so if you are thinking about heading off and you've maybe been lurking or something like that, uh, it's not often that I get transcodes. You guys have been an absolute delight of an audience. And I should have said this much sooner when we had a lot of people inside of it, but it was absolutely great having you in here. And... Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, Duke Paulus. But that, of course, goes to everybody in chat as well. Uh, whether you're lurking or actively participating, whether you're asking to be on the chat, um, it's, uh, it's great to have so many people in here active uh, with the cast. So it's, um, it's a great honor uh, to be the sloppy seconds after Shant. <laughs> no. um, it's, great to, it's great to have such a such an active uh, group of people in here. And again, the fact that I get transcodes allows me to use this internet package that I put a bit of money into to being able to cast at high resolutions with. Uh, 
Oh, not a problem, Elkanu. That is specifically because of a really great uh, streamer who I know here in Vancouver. Oh, thank you. I've, uh, I don't know if it's FAT or FAT5, but either way, thank you so much for uh, that follow. I really appreciate it. First streamer you went to? Yeah, Elkanu, so um, the uh, Vancouver streamer W. Shand, uh, somebody makes a living doing this. Oh, Duster Rhymes, thank you very much for that follow as well. Um, he uh, He's somebody I know uh, in real life, but um, he saw fit to host me after his cast. And uh, actually, if you're looking for uh, another English speaker, um, he's, a, he's a pretty great guy. He... Uh, he does a lot of very innovative stuff on Twitch. He actually has a band that he um, he uh, rehearses with on Twitch as well. So I think he's a pretty uh, pretty great guy, and definitely. Um, I mean, as a smaller streamer, I, I definitely appreciate it when he, um, you know, that he gives me a host or something like that. Because really, in his case, he should be growing his own stream. He makes a living doing this, uh, and so there's not a huge benefit in terms of me reciprocating. Uh, with a host or something like that, right? Most of the people I know uh, who watch my channel already know about him. Um, but he's really nice in uh, in being able to, you know, give me a bit of attention and uh, and just getting me in touch with such a really great audience like this, so... Um. <laughs> oh, come on, Fire Reckoning! You know I, what I meant by that. I'm also very flattered, by the way, that I was the first streamer. Um, not something I would have known directly, but... Uh, I appreciate it, because you actually... I was going to say, you hang out on a lot of the channels I enjoy hanging out in, too, so I know how good it is. Wandered up for about two hours into this hour-long stream, come back four hours later, you're still here. Yeah, well, W. Shand hosted me. I'm not going to gonna turn these people... Uh, okay, so, I mean, he shows you know have a lot of potential and might do the same for him later. Oh, that's really nice of you to say, Alkanu. You can never get above ten views. Man, Duster Rhymes, I mean, as we said a little bit earlier... Uh, it's fats. Not everybody says fat five. No problem. They stream got here. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, It's a little bit of a unique case because uh, obviously we got hosted by a pretty big channel, uh, W Shan, and uh, which is not to say actually we're being hosted by quite a few channels. I think I'll take a minute, especially because we've had a little bit of a changing of the guard in terms of the people who hang out. Um, but yeah, just to rhymes. I mean, um, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. It is not that long ago that I had uh, nobody in chat and I was just speaking to an empty chat room. Uh, and then um, the reason why we have the numbers in here right now is entirely based off of the host that I've been giving, a uh, given. And like I said, we've got a, a bit of a new batch inside of chat right now. So once I finish these fights, I can never backstab right. I am an idiot. There's the backstab. Um, but yeah, I do want to take a minute and uh, and let you know the people who are hosting the channel right now, because there's a lot of really great streamers in here, and they... Uh... Oh god, Elkanu, thank you so much for that host! Um, I know, guys, I already gave a quick shout-out to Elkanu, but I will stress it again, especially if you are a streamer yourself and you want to learn a little bit about, um... Oh, that's painful. Not a problem, Elkanu. There's no no need to apologize. Actually, guys, so I'm going to be running through Blight Town to recover my corpse. Um... You can never backstab right because you're the most trustworthy person unless you're playing Crusader Kings, in which case you're brutal. <laughs> That's great. Um, guys, because I'm just going to be doing a lot of retracing of the old steps, I guess it's not bad that I, uh, I died there because I got invaded. Um, but uh, I think now would be a really great time to say if you are a streamer... Um, actually, here, uh, before I do that, I'm going to take a moment to myself and uh, take a second to shout out. We're being hosted by seven channels right now. So we've got CPO Williams, longtime viewer of this channel, and uh, somebody I played Crusader Kings 2 with a couple of times. Yep, another wonderful streamer in his own right. Elkanu, of course, who you just saw there. Uh, Leah2, Kite260, W Shan, Jesse Quill. These are all absolutely fantastic streamers. And you get to see, I mean, all of them have been in chat. You've been able to see exactly what kind of people these are. They're uh, wonderful, and I, I consider myself very lucky uh, to be able to watch them in addition to have them inside of my chat. 
But I think what now would be a really great time, uh, if you are a streamer, uh, obviously I am going to know the people who have hosted me, uh, but I'm sure there's a few streamers who are in chat right now who I don't, um, I don't know. Uh, and who I haven't had a chance to see yet. So if you are a streamer, I think it'd be really great if you can uh, say it. Even if you've already gotten a shout out tonight, uh, feel free to drop your link in chat. Tell us what you're about, what time you cast, what games you cast. Uh, feel free to sell yourself because I know I have had a lot of luck in terms of um, the kinds of people who have uh, supported me along the way. Seriously, Clara, Jesse Quill, Miss Ariella, fellow Team Panda member. Let me take a minute and shout you out properly. Um, thank you so much for that host, uh, Ariella. Actually, Ariella uh, gave us, uh, unintentionally gave us a wonderful little moment from uh, our last, uh, our last L.A. Noir stream. Sorry, La Noir stream. Um, so let me just take a second here and shout her out properly. But yeah, if you guys have your own stream, uh, even if you've already gotten a shout out tonight, feel free to let us know who you are and what you do, because I am looking for more entertainment. I've had a lot of people who... Um, who've supported me along this uh, along this line. And I think the very least that I could do is uh, one, for my own entertainment value, um, but two, just to give you guys some exposure to what's been a really fantastic audience. And I'm sure some of you guys will find something to like. So Dusta Rhymes is a Dark Souls LOL streamer. Dry humor and sarcasm quotes are a must. So you'll probably really like Ponce's stream. Uh, guys, I'll take a minute to say Miss Ariella is an Australian caster, somebody I knew from Vancouver, but she's since went back to the land of poisonous things. Uh, places where Quilag is in fact a real bug, and uh, or Arachnid rather. And she actually one of the things I remember her streaming. There's two things I remember her streaming uh, the most, which are The Sims and uh, Kitty Powers Matchmaker. I was absolutely absolutely won over on Kitty Powers Matchmaker watching her uh, play that. But uh, extremely uh, nice person, very very kind. Um, somebody who I think is a, uh, you know, I, uh, not to get into too much detail, obviously people's personal lives are not my mind to talk about, but, uh, somebody I know who wound up going through a really tough time, uh, when I got to know her and, um, really revealed a lot of character, um, somebody who I think, uh, Again, it's easy to be nice to people when things are going well, um, but I've also got to see her during some really hard times brought on from people who um, maybe meant well, but uh, obviously behaved in a way that was quite uh, quite painful, I guess is, a, is the term to use. Um, and so in that sense, it's, uh, it's something that just where you, you learn a little bit about a person and just see um, what they're made of, and she she really revealed a, a very beautiful personality, a very uh, very kind soul. So uh, definitely recommend checking her out. And uh, her cast is very much a reflection of her personality. Uh, definitely very lighthearted, very fun, and um, plays a lot of Trace Chamber, plays a lot of nice little indie titles. So hey, Mia zero one two one eight three. As I say, there may be twelve thousand one hundred eighty two other Mias out there, but you are the only one for me. I hope you're doing quite well. Let's see else who we have here. Uh, keep rolling with the bug on me. <laughs> Need to play a match, but yeah, it's a really good one, uh, Leah too. It's, um, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it, because it's not normally the kind of thing I play. Um... By the way, guys, I've only had Dusta Rhymes uh, mention his stream. Is there nobody else who streams who um, I haven't mentioned already? Oh, wonderful, Dusta Rhymes. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> all the good names with MIA were taken unless you wanted seven underlines. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mia. I mean, just calling me Mr. Hot Voice would have been enough, but that host is... Especially because I really like the Clockwork Orange clip. <laughs> just means so much more. I am bad at this. I am doubly bad at this. But at least I haven't triggered multiple, uh... Multiple be beasties yet. 
aggroed, I guess is the term, not triggered. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the game and interested in playing it, the way you do a backstab is, uh, first of all, you get very lucky in your placement. Infamous Matt, another host from you. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a great night. I'll always be Mr. Hot Voice to you. Even if I talk like this? So friendly and personable, really liking so far. Way too many hey, oh my god, thanks for the follow you. Welcome to the insert viewership title here. <laughs> um... Well, I mean, it's I, I appreciate it, right, uh, Duster Rhymes? We were actually sp talking a couple of times uh, about the rhetoric of Twitch. Back to lurking now? Not a problem, Mia. It's always great to see you, even if you just stop by to say hi. It means a lot. Uh, like I said, uh, people are busy. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can be doing. Time is one of the best things that you can do. Just having a body in chat um, to know that somebody bothered to take the time to spend their bandwidth on me is a... Um, it means a lot. Um, Jesus. Especially if I talk like that. Ouch. Oh no. Goodbye souls. Oh wonderful guys. Thank you so much for supporting Elkanu. Um, he is a hell of a streamer. You guys are not going to be disappointed. Um, but yeah, so Duster Rhymes, we were talking a little bit about the rhetoric of Twitch, and um, I can't believe that when my weapon was damaged, I didn't have any problems with those guys, and I've, they've killed me twice now. Oh well. It's how the game goes. But, um... One of the big things is that, you know, obviously you want to be active, you want to, you know, reward people for stopping by the ch uh, the channel and things like that. Um, but the big thing for me is I don't like doing, um, I really don't like doing just a generic shout out or like a generic welcome. Um, because in the end, it doesn't really give people a reason to check things out. Um, I can never be guaranteed to... Um, I can never really be guaranteed to identify what people will like. Uh, I can only kind of give them the probability, right? But I think it's important to connect people with a, a reason as to why I like that stream and why I follow it. So like when I talk about W Shand, um, why am I going back that way out? Um, it's mostly so I can make it to Sen's Fortress. It's also the most direct way I can get to where I want to go. Um, Normally those, I mean, those monsters really shouldn't be causing me any kind of problem, but I don't know. I'm just going dumb. Uh, one of the ways I'll get around that, actually, is I'm going to take a do tour and go to the um, go to the other bonfire, just because it's a little bit closer. I'm getting kind of tired of wasting all this purple moss on, uh, on the poison. Um, but yeah, so with that in mind, though, uh, so again, I, I, am, I appreciate the, there are some good, um, you know, like, stream maintenance reasons to, you know, to be a little hyperactive, to be very, you know, very, in, you know, generic in your, your kind of greeting, because you want to get on with the show, and you want to, you also want to acknowledge that somebody was there, um, but for me, again, because this is very much about the people, right, and the, uh, you know, the fact that, I think my stream is better off because I have such an active and interesting chat. You know, everybody has kind of their own perspective and their own view of things. Um, I think it's, you know, it's important to recognize it. It's important to recognize the individual because that's ultimately what makes Twitch more interesting than, let's say, HBO. I mean, I like HBO, don't get me wrong, who doesn't? Um, but in this case, it's very passive entertainment. And here, if you are interacting with individual viewers, you know, everybody has their own story. And I think it's important to, um... Oh, thanks for the, uh, info, Hacker of Drow. And welcome, by the way. I don't think I said hi to you yet. Um... But yeah, that's, that's all where it comes from. Um, I think it's, uh, it's important to recognize that if somebody's taken the time to host, um, that's another opportunity for me to find, you know, new people who might be interested in the, in the channel. Um, and, uh, again, 
I mean, if I want, I do have a cutesy name for my channel. I mean, I, I call, uh, actually Jesse Quill has started using this more often. I uh, call it the system flock. But, um, but again, like it's, uh, it should be, in the end, it should always come back to the individual. It should always come back to the person. And uh, again, because I find it very easy to do because, um, again, you guys have given me the chance. Uh, we've gone from this one, um, this one, uh, actually, Blank Iron Caliber, I, I appreciate the recommendation on that one. But in this case, I need to rely on my shield to block the damage. Um, so in this case, I'm actually going to keep my heater shield. I'm not so worried about doing the extra damage. I'm just getting a little impatient with the... Uh, with the enemies and it's translating into me taking some damage. Yeah, system flock and then... Whenever we're tired of the system talk, we go and check out another another channel. Listen, I was mildly drunk at the time I came up with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was talking about, um, for those of you who haven't played the game, um, if you want to do a backstab, basically you get lucky in your position behind the dude, push forward and attack, and sometimes it works. So that's an example of a failed dodge roll, or sorry, not dodge roll, failed uh, attack. But it didn't matter because he had enough uh, damage. Yeah, so I think a lot of people who play, um, a lot of people who play like Bloodborne and stuff like that, um, have gotten used to uh, to not using shields. I mean, I dodge when I have to, but um, I'm definitely not good enough at it. Man, these guys are unforgiving in their placement. I mean, I could just technically run, um, but I'm mildly embarrassed that they've gotten the better of me, so... Because I'm a man, I'm gonna get stubborn about this. When somebody says, thanks for the follow sub, welcome to the sub club, like chat and community is only exclusive to people who pay to support the channel. Everyone who likes a channel to you is in the club, and you hate it when people... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, I'm not gonna... I'm not in any position to tell people how to run their channels, um, because again, people... People have their own reasons for streaming, people have their own uh, reasons for... You know, for doing what they do. Um, but for me, I mean... We went from just shy of 660 uh, viewers to 678 right now. And yet, every single person who's come in here and hit the follow button, and I mean, people who've hit the follow button and later unfollowed, um, again, they gave me a chance. They gave me their time. Um, and so for me, it's important to recognize that. Um, oh, I'm dead. Maybe not. There we go. But, I mean, again, the other one for me is that uh, I there's a lot that I need to learn as a caster. Um, and so when I think a channel is doing something right, I either try to emulate it or I try to, you know, to find where it works in my own, um, in my own format. And if I don't like what a channel is doing, um, you know, I, I look for the channels that are doing it right. Uh, I try to learn from the mistakes. And uh, I always like to talk about positives on channels because, in the end, I'm always looking for more forms of entertainment. Um, I, uh, I don't really spend a lot of time in channels. I mean, sometimes I have to spend time in channels that I don't think are as effective um, because I will evaluate um, applications for Team Panda. This is Seriously Clara's team. Um, but in the end, I, uh, you know, when I'm given my options, uh, who doesn't want to have more fun, right? So I, uh, I usually just have, um, I have kind of rose tinted glasses when it comes to Twitch, uh, just because again, the, the streams I usually get to watch are, are really, really high quality ones. Where's the key in the lower undead burg? You don't remember where to find it. Uh, that's a really good question, Duster Rhymes. I don't really remember this stuff. It's a little bit more muscle memory at this point, but I'm sure there's a couple of really good, uh, Dark Souls experts inside here. 
try to do such a good voice in your channel, but <laughs> um, I, I'm, there's a couple of people who are uh, are obviously very well versed in Dark Souls, so I'm sure they'll be able to help you out, Duster Rhymes. Uh, I think Black Iron Caliber might be able to answer that question for you, actually. Um, Mia, I actually haven't heard your voice in your channel yet, so. Um, but Infamous, I trust Infamous Matt. And Paranormal does. Some of the bigger streamers have set their chat to subs only uh, so they can calm down the chat. Then they'll probably be able to be one, read one out of, say, 25 or 30 minutes. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, um, it's very hard for me to attribute particular behaviors to uh, individual streamers, right? Um, I, I, like, I witness what's going on in the chat, I witness something like sub-only mode or what have you, um, but in terms of the cause, the reason why they're doing something, usually that's, um, that's their, uh, that's their individual, uh, choice. Um, and generally they don't need to justify that to me, so, uh, I try to, I try to keep neutral as I ca as neutral as I can. I mean, obviously I have my opinions on things, but, um, I try not to, to get too dogmatic about these things. Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now, we have a new problem. It's noisy, it snores, and its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Damn, that stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. <sighs> Maybe it's time I... Do something about it. <sighs> Maybe it's time I do something up. So usually when you have a major event, you can go to these characters and get some I'm new really dialogue. I'm pleased to see you safe, as always. <laughs> if you provide the materials, I can teach you pyromancy. Your dog is in this game. <laughs> My teacher, whom I imagine still resides in the Great Swamp, had a funny way of putting it. He said that pyromancy is the ultimate fantasy. We are born into dark and warmed by fire, but this fire we cannot touch. Those whose fascination with fire persists learn to hold it in their own hand. He rather had a way with words, the old withering frog. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, my ultimate fantasy is Jesse Quill. Wait, did I say that out loud? Earn a certain respect. The Witch of Isolith, one of the legendary lords, is the godmother of pyramids. So the day I became undead, I was ecstatic. I felt as if I'd been... Thank you for that, uh, Black Iron Caliber. myself to gain some arts. Of course, it wasn't all that romantic in the end. <laughs> Damn it, I see! The pyromancer's flame is, is a part of his own body. The flame develops right along with his skill. When I gave you that flame, I gave him part of myself. Please take good care of him. Goodbye then. Be safe, friend. Don't you dare go on it. What's up, Sir Friend Zone? Are you gonna charge me three thousand? Uh, oh, you. Have you seen the lady? Oh, blast, where might she be? And would she be safe? Oh, I'm sorry. Miracles, was it? Sometimes I lose myself. Pay me no mind. You play this game so much that most locations are instantly on your mind. <laughs> it's definitely a skill I wish I had. Um, I mean, it's coming back to me, so but... You're keeping at it myself. I'm fine. I would never want to block Let's get Shake it! Thank you very much for that follow. I wish to do what I can to locate Master Logan. I am aware of my shortcomings, but I cannot very well just sit around here and rot. Oh, do not worry. I have considered our relationship. I will only leave after I have taught you all the sorceries that I know. I shall count myself lucky if I manage to locate Logan. Or even return. And welcome back, Miss Ariella. Uh, your message was communicated Two by your servants. Are required for sorcery. First, you must equip a wand. Second, you must attune a sorcery. Then you will be ready to fire away. Oh, and don't forget to aim. Ah, ah, ah. Just a little sorcery joke. Stay safe. <laughs> you do enjoy having a long sword. Oh my. Um, 
I think when I played it, I had like a Black Knight sword. Oh wait, I need to find uh, King Sinker Frampt. I think I can't talk to him yet, but. Was it you who rang the bell of awakening? I am the primordial serpent, King Seeker Frapt, close friend of the great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the bell of awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Hey, hey, easy with the big words there, college. Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead. Your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire, cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo and acquire the Lord Vessel. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? So I guess the big question here is, do I really want to uh, stock up on souls? Oh yeah, yes I do. Um, well, chosen undead. I remain here and await thee. Actually, no. I'm going to be going into Sense Fortress, which means I'm very likely to lose them. But I think um, I'll crack open to my bottomless box when I get a chance. And I'll feed them all of those items so I can... Uh, I can get that last level and equip the last uh, last bit of the red. Um. Uh, what happens if you feed him the coins? I also think I only have one coin right now. Uh, leave me on in the background while you get ready for bed. Certainly, Miss Ariella. Uh, I probably should have gone to bed hours ago. Okay. Um... Large amounts of souls. Okay, good to know. Uh, I do still need to pick up the rest of the items. Um, I'm definitely looking for that last point of stamina, so... Uh, so again, for the benefit of those who haven't played Dark Souls, what's happening here is um, I need... Uh All right, I don't think I got rid of, rid of anything here. Um, in this game, to you have a few different kinds of, um, of roles. So even though you may have a certain level of encumbrance, uh, so the amount of weight that your character can hold, you... Um, you only want to use a quarter of it if you want to have the fastest roll in the game. And again, I'm not a very good uh, dodge roller, but I still want to, you know, I still want to do my best. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I need at least one more. Po well, hang on, let me just double check that. Uh, what do I do? Uh, so I don't. I don't have a real job. Uh, I'm currently a graduate student at the University of British Columbia, and I uh, I study economics. Um, just a master's. I'm not a not a PhD candidate or anything like that. Um, but as part of my kind of my financial aid package, um, I got a TAing uh, gig. So uh, I'm I suppose, for lack of a better term, I'm a bit of a teacher. Um, but in the same sense, like I, I more grade uh, assignments and conduct tutorials rather than actually do any uh, original work on my own part. Um, okay. Sorry, I just... Um, I want to make sure that I'm calculating this correctly. So I'd have 17.5. I'd actually need two levels. What I need two levels? I think I still need more. Mm. 
Okay, so I actually need 31 endurance, it looks like. No, 32. Um, I don't think I can actually get three levels out of that. So I'm gonna hold. I'm gonna hold off on giving King Sinkerframp the items uh, until I've got a few more. Um, until I've got a few more uh, levels on me. Basically, I'm preserving the option uh, for future levels. Oh, but I need to uh, need to change my shirt. Just like riding a bike. <laughs> Um, although I suppose I could have triggered that when one of the serpents showed up. Oh right, I forget, I'm not like, immortal anymore. Um, these guys are probably going to be kind of hard. Oh hell no! <laughs> I like living. How's that not a backstab? This is so much easier when you let the darts kill one of these things. Ouch. Screw you. Oh yeah, I guess I probably shouldn't attack it with the Thorland Talisman, huh? Yikes. Okay, that would have been really impressive if you didn't get me on the backswing. <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh, there's plenty of them in here, Pie of Reckoning. <laughs> I mean, I should be considering going to bed relatively soon. Uh, so let's see if we can at least get to a... <clears throat> let's see if we can at least get to a... A bonfire in here. Uh, I'd really rather not fall down. I mean, I'm probably going to wind up getting smacked by one of these um, these pendulums, and these guys are going to wreck me, but I'm, I'm not really that eager to... Wait. I already slept at the bonfire by... Yes, I did. By uh, the blacksmith. Oh, I can't kick those guys? Sparta! So, um, Sense Fortress is probably the point. So, it's funny, like, I gave up pretty much. Oh, yeah, um. That's magic damage, I think, so it's probably better if I quit. This guy always causes me so much trouble. Um, but, uh... Basically, so, originally the boar was the thing that caused me to, like, stop the game. Um, so I think it's really funny. Actually, you know, what am I doing? I don't need to worry about dodging here. So, it doesn't matter if I... 
I have heavier gear on. Um, so the funny thing about this is that uh, Sun's Fortress is easily like the most punishing in terms of just like hostile level design. I still don't really know how to handle these pendulums. I think for this one it's just like straight up leg it. Um, and hope I get the timing right. Um, but I remember it, like this was also the point where I was like determined to beat this game. Um, so it kind of got me through. And it's another indication in terms of just kind of what... I mean, obviously there's a certain temperament that you need for this kind of game, but it's, uh, it's where it becomes so rewarding. So we'll just give this one more shot. I'm hooped. Oh, nope, made it. Um, these guys actually drop a pretty cool weapon. Uh, it just occurred to me the traps are actually kind of crappy, so I will go back to Shadow Garb. Um, so what you want to look for in Sense Fortress are these little um, these little holes where the arrows can come out. Um, there is also going to be something, I think the trigger is around here for the floor, but it's sometimes hard to keep an eye on the floor. So the best thing you can do is look for the stuff that's at eye level. Uh, and in this case, if ever you see one of these little hiding holes, uh, chances are there's going to be some trap nearby that you want to keep an eye on. Worst thing is the boulders. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Oh, hey. <laughs> God, I love that moment. Oh my God, he's still alive. Okay, uh, I am crapping myself now. There's a fun little moment. Uh, you're going to be able to redirect the boulders here. How tough are I? So I uh, survived a boulder running you over. Um, I mean, I have a fair amount of vitality, but I'd rather not tempt fate. <laughs> you only YOLO once. Are you kidding me? I didn't even know they could do that. Okay, this is a pickle. Um, ha! <laughs> uh, I don't think there's any other way for me to handle this, so... Whoa! Ooh, Shotel. Um, that's not a bad PvP weapon, actually. Not that I really want to do PvP. And nary a backstab was to be found. There we go. Well, I mean, some of them have been trying to, to bite me. Um, that's the only one that actually succeeded, though. Oh yeah, and I gotta switch to the sorcerer's garb, not the... Oh! This game's full of surprises. Uh, I gotta switch to the sorcerer's robe, not shadow, because of the magic damage. Hey, Sigmar. You come from. Splendid news, I tell you. <laughs> mm. Ah, so you see my fight. Yes, indeed. I've run up against the wall. For a ball, to be precise. I'm afraid 
I'm a bit too tough to be out running those things. So here I sit in quite a bit of Magino. We have another development. <laughs> I mean, Sig Sigmire is a, a really fun little character. He's really well uh, acted. So I don't think I can sneak up on this thing, but let's give it a shot. Okay, not quite what I intended to do, but whatever. It's definitely moments like these I kind of appreciate why um, the grass shield is kind of a... an appeal. Because um, I'm definitely, definitely suffering as far as stamina is concerned, but... I'm not quite ready to take that 5% uh, damage. Ugh, this is going to be nerve-wracking. That's not even tempt fate. Okay. I don't even remember what they were hiding in here. I also think this is the first place where you run into mimics. Okay. So, what is this ring? Uh, poise is pretty good. Defense versus physical? I mean, technically that's not a bad combo with the grass shield, but not enough to, to move me. Fate would have gutted you if you decided to keep running there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't believe I ever have done Sigmire's for a full quest. Okay, so here's an example of a trap. See the, uh, the pressure plate on the wall? I can't remember. I think there's enemies back here, so I think the way to handle this one is, uh... Oh, he's gonna trigger it on his own, I think. Nope, I gotta trigger it. There we go. Uh, also, I failed to recognize that the hole was behind me. Um, but yeah, I don't believe I've done Sigmar's full quest because he wasn't uh, down below after I opened up Sen's fortress. Um, oh, this part. I can't remember if I'm supposed to go up or down. <laughs> Either way, I'm not supposed to be there. Turns out, I am tough enough to take a boulder to the face, though. So, there's that. I think I'm gonna try going... up first. It's gonna be close. Ouch! Solaris is sad too, but it's a bit more out of pity. Um, I know how it ends. I don't know if there's a full quest line for... Well, there has to be, I guess. You can't get to the other parts if you... I'm an idiot. There's got to be a way I can get the drop on this guy. up Pie of reckoning 
You... You're on notice, my friend. <laughs> I don't remember which way I'm supposed to go. Um, loot's always good. Hey, more black sorcery. Now that's the long way to... So I think what I'm normally supposed to do is I'm actually supposed to go up that lift to this spot. But, um... I don't think there's anything rolling down here. I just want to double check. Okay. Oh, I want to uh, realign that then. If this guy's gonna sleep on the job... The one who's moping about Big Hat Logan? Oh, uh, I gotta move this one more time. one more for good measure. I don't even want to imagine how that happened. Sparta! This place is melting my mind. The inactivity is repressive. Reward me! Uh, oh, heavens. Thank you. I'm saved. And I'd love to resume my travels. But I must log a few things first. And I owe you a favor. I will return to Farling Shrine. Speak with me there so that I may impart my sorcery. It's actually a side of me that would really like to try a, uh, a sorcery build in this game. I think that's an elevator? I can't remember. There is a soul of a hero. Nope. Uh, I think this is just a drop to my death. Yeah. Uh, so what is it going to say? Uh, yeah, so I, I actually haven't tried a sorcerer character yet, but I mean, Big Hack Logan's kind of a neat character, so there's a side of me that would like to interact with him a little bit more and just see how sorcery works. I mean, I've seen a couple of videos of people play sorcerers. They seem relatively fun. Um, but, uh, again, I mean, I first played this as a, a melee game, so it's a little hard for me to, to just sort of... It's a little hard for me to disentangle that from my, my canonical um, Dark Souls experience. I think I'm safe. It's nice not to have to outrun boulders for this. I don't even know if you're supposed to. But. Uh. 
We should just open this chest, right? This is a safe chest to open. You must be aligned with Lotrec of Karim. <laughs> um, and I don't think I know Dark Stothker. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll open this one, right, chat? This is a good thing to open. I don't even know if you can backstab these. Gonna have to go have a good end. Uh, life, keep up what you're doing. You're awesome. Thank you so much, Elkanu. Uh, again, it's an absolute pleasure to have you in the channel. And uh, I don't get a chance to express this as often inside of your own chat. But thank you very much for the shows that you put on. They are always a lot of fun. And you are an absolute pleasure to shout out. Uh, I'm really glad to see the success that you've been, um, that you've been having lately. And I hope it continues. But uh, have a great night, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time, either in your channel or mine. Ouch! Man, these things are tough when you don't have a a billion strength and a black knight sword. Ouch! Jesus Christ! Uh, I'm not sure if they insta-kill or not. I've never wanted to find out. <laughs> uh, literally after... Uh, so normally here... Oh, that son of a bitch! <laughs> All right, so you are going to see why System Chalk is a bad person. Rate message, plus rating. So I have just endorsed that message saying that it's a good idea to open that chest, basically. Um, but yeah, basically after... Uh, after I found out there were mimics in the game, I always attacked chests. Now, there's a tell here that there's uh, blood on this. So you have a minute, jump out, because if you don't, then you get killed. I think this is where I came up the last time, so... I'm just really looking for a fireplace so I can go to bed. Um... This game really likes its subtleties. Yeah, I mean, so the... The way you can tell a Mimic by not attacking it is um, the chain on the right is bending the other direction. Um, it took me forever to, to notice that, but there is actually a tell within the game uh, that it's, it's not the same kind of chest. Um, but, I mean, I have no idea how you're supposed to figure that out when you encounter the first one. All right, looks like there's a guy down below. There is. There is a guy down below. Coward. Uh, what does Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring do? Wearer produces no sound whatsoever. <laughs> so the developers don't listen to my cries of anguish as this game hurts me. Um, I probably don't want to find out what's down that pit. At least this is a known, a known quantity. 
I am gonna get smacked. Alright. Could be worse. Alright, I think I've just gone in a big circle. Um, I'm not quite sure... What's next? Uh, I really don't want to waste... Uh... Oh, not good. Man, I'm so bad at perspective stuff like this. There we go. <laughs> I would never want to belong to any Carol31, thank you very much for uh, for that follow. Uh, we'll probably be wrapping up a little bit. Uh, I'm just trying to find a bonfire. Can't remember quite where I'm supposed to go though. I've only I've only actually played through this game once. Um, so this is my second time ever in Sen's Fortress. I'm certainly enjoying myself. I know some of the tricks. <laughs> but, um... Okay, let's go where the boulders are not going. That seems a good place to actually put these... Got to sense at the same time as me and you're at the start of Anor Orlando. Oh, God. I'm an idiot. There we go. <sighs> um... I'm not entirely sure that's the most effective trap in the world. By the way, guys, keep in mind, too, like, when I first played this, I had, I think, eight Estus Flasks at the start of this. Oh, God, this part. Um, I don't actually know what the good advice here is. Um, but yeah, just, just... Think about trying to do this the first time, no saves, possibly five Estus Flasks, depending on where you charged up. This thing is... makes a man out of you. Even if you're a woman, it makes a man out of you. Smooth. Okay, they're coming up both sides. Ouch. Not my favorite thing. That's stupid of me. Why are you reminded uh, so much of Labyrinth when you come to those advice things? I haven't seen Labyrinth in... Oh god, I don't even know how long it's been. Um, but yeah, so I'm out of Estus. I have no other means of healing. I think this exists just to try and see whether or not players are stupid and will fall to their death. <sighs> um, Doc, you can really recommend you watching the Happy Hobbits world record run if you have time. Uh, yeah, I'd be really interested in seeing it. So he, um, his was like a no-hit run, right? Oops. Ow. Ah. That's unfortunate. Alright guys, I'm not sure I am going to be able to get to another uh, shrine in time. I'm at a six and a half hour mark and it's about 4.30 in the morning. Uh, this was supposed to be a one hour cast, so I think 
Uh, I am going to start the cast at getting back my 9,500 souls. And uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to thank everybody who hosted the uh, stream. And I'm going to find somebody to uh, host tonight myself. I think you guys have been an absolutely fantastic audience. And it would be wonderful if I can give you something to check out. So uh, that's it for me for uh, Dark Souls for tonight. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to take a quick second here. Thank CPO Williams, Yip, Miss Ariella, Leah2, Kite260, Mia012183, W Shand, and Jesse Quill. Uh, in addition, of course, we've got Elkanu who hosted us a little bit earlier. And uh, again, it was absolutely fantastic to meet so many new people. Uh, I owe quite a bit to W Shand for uh, hosting me tonight. You guys were a pleasure to have. Uh, I'm going to just turn on a little bit of the electro swing to give you some times to. Uh, so just give me some time to find somebody to uh, check out, to host. Uh, I think it would be wonderful if I could get you guys to hang around and give somebody a, somebody else a shot because I owe it to you to give you some entertainment. And then I definitely uh, owe it to you to... Um, or sorry, I definitely want to pass on some of the, the love. So, oh, guys, we've got a great uh, Japanese caster on right now. Now, he's not playing uh, Dark Souls. Um, but he is playing uh, Back to the Future. So in this case, I think I'm going to host Kitch22. He's a fellow member on uh, Team Panda. So what we're going to do here, I'll give you... Oh, did Nightbot quit on me? Nope, he's here. So what I'm going to do here, we normally have a raid message. So there is the link, Kitch22. I'm going to be hosting him in a second, but if you can copy that uh, list, we're tired of system talk, heard this place was better. Uh, there's definitely a number of you still in the chat. I think he's a really wonderful streamer, definitely somebody I recommend checking out. Very good uh, personality in terms of a uh, really great way of kind of keeping chat moving and, and dialogue. He's a little bit better at interactivity than I am. Um, but I am done for tonight. So again, thank you everybody. You've been an absolute pleasure to stream for. I hope to get a chance to see you all again, either inside of W Shan's channel uh, or back here. Here. We'll definitely be doing a bit of more um, Dark Souls, but tomorrow we are going to be dedicating to Layers of Fear, which just got released. So until then, have a great night and thank you everybody for watching.